all glory be to the Father. All is well, all is well. Praise the Lord while we here. Praise the Lord while you got breath in your soul. All glory be to God. All glory be to the Father. All glory be to God. In Jesus Christ's righteous name. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sacrifice yourself for me so that I can live freely. If it makes me a man, yeah, I'm mad. God, you really came for me. Yeah, I know. Can't wait to see you in heaven. When I go, give me gifts like it's Christmas. My main goal is to see my brothers different and save souls. I ask myself why. Cause he loves me knowing I was getting high. Came to be a son when all I did was fly. But that ain't stop him from being right by my side. So I'ma preach your word until I die. Mm. He really cared for me. Did it all for love. Yes, he set me free. to the Father. Peace be upon y'all. Peace be upon y'all. So, today, we are going to be talking about the priesthood. We're going to be talking about how glory to God, Justine, play, who's that? Play, DB, Y, Zach. What's up, bro? Tokyo. Where you at, bro? I'm in the east coast of uh, uh, United States of America. New York, near New York City. An hour away. Hey, bro, what do you think of gymnastic Um, I heard the word before, but I never really knew what that mean, Tabitha. So I'm looking it up right now, and it says... Gnosticism is the belief that human beings contain a piece of God, the highest good or, div or divine spark within themselves, which has fallen from the immaterial world into the bodies of humans. Um, it sounds like 
They worship two or more gods. Christians were monotheists. So they it says the Gnostics were du, du, dualists and worship two or more gods. Christians were monotheists and worship one God. So that's what I'm reading on the internet, but I don't really can't really give you an answer like that because I haven't did too much research on it to tell you what I think. I never heard nobody profess to be a gymnastic person or teach about it, so I never learned too much about it. Hi, bro, what calendar do you follow? I just follow the regular calendar. The, uh, the um, you know, the regular calendar year. American calendar, if you want to call it. The calendar that everybody in the United States follow. But I don't celebrate holidays and stuff like that. So this teaching right here is going to be about the, the changing in the priesthood. I got an email from a brother. And he wanted me to um, speak about this topic. He says, good day, brother. I wanted to get your view on the order Melchizedek in Hebrews 7, Hebrews chapter 7, dealing with the change of the order from Levitical priesthood and its relationship to sons of God. He said, I would like your response to focus on the difference in paying tithes and the transfer of blessing. Okay, let's go to work right now. Y'all ready? Hope y'all got y'all Bibles out. I ain't come here to really linger around. Hebrews 7, y'all. We're going to be talking about the Levitical priesthood and the change from the priesthood. Now, we know that Aaron had the priesthood in the Old Testament. Aaron and his sons, they were the Levitical priesthood. That's what we read about when we read Leviticus. But when Jesus came and he was sacrificed and he died on the cross, he was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the change in the order of the priesthood. He became a high priest. So we're going to read about this. Actually, in the old priesthood, they were taking tithes and offerings. The first time tithes and offerings was mentioned was the Levitical priesthood was allowed to take tithes from their own brethren. That is the Hebrew Israelites. So we're going to jump in to Hebrews 7. So they were only allowed to take tithes from their own brethren. The king of righteousness. We're going to be in Hebrews 7 talking about the king of righteousness. For this Melchizedek king of Salem, priest of the Most High, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first, being by interpretation king of righteousness. And after that, also king of Salem, or king of Salem, excuse me, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider, now, now what he talked about when he say, can you speak about the, he says, What's your view? I wanted to get your view on the order Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter 7, dealing with the change of the order from Levitical priesthood and its relationship to sons of God. I would like your response to focus on the difference in paying tithes and the transfer of blessing as it relates to Abraham when he first met Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14. We got we gonna get there. Don't worry about that. All right. So it says that now got to remember. It says Hebrews chapter seven verse two to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first, being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of 
Selim, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, neither having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now, you got to remember, this all talking about Jesus right here. It says, now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi who received the office of priesthood, listen up, y'all, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren though they come out of the loins of Abraham. You, did y'all hear that? It says that they can take tithes of their brethren. So there was never any Levitical priesthood taking tithes from Gentiles or other nations. So when you see a church taking tithes, that's a whole different story. But this is why Jesus came and we, he was the made the ultimate offering. You get what I'm saying? No more sacrifices and offerings. It's been a change in the priesthood. So what that means is no one should be claiming to be a priest. Not the Catholic priest, not the Pope. Jesus Christ is the high priest. If them priests are claiming to still be priests, that means that they don't believe Jesus is a high priest because there's no mediator between man and God only mediator is Jesus the man Jesus Christ there's one mediator between man and God no one else and that's the man Jesus Christ so anybody telling you that they're priests and you got to confess your sins to them they're telling you that they're keeping the laws of the Old Testament so if they shave they beard they're telling you that they are not keeping the law so if they'll be judged by the law that's what it says so if you call yourself a priest, a priest of who? A priest of what? This is this is a deep topic. This brother told me he got attacked for teaching this stuff right here. Hit the like button. <clears throat> and verily, they that are the son. I'm going to read everything about how he told me he got attacked. Teaching somebody about this and everything. I'm not going to mention his name, though. May peace be upon you too, brother. And thank you for sending me this email. So Leviticus, I mean, Hebrews chapter seven, verse five. Sorry. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham, but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here, men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them. You hear this? And here, men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it, the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron for the priesthood being changed? There's made of, a, there's made of necessity a change also of the law. This was, he was asking me to speak with about the difference in paying tithes and the transfer of blessing as it relates to Abraham when he first met Melchizedek. So, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity 
a change also in the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. That right there lets you know that the change in the law is going to be spectacular changes because it says who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. He's coming, giving us spiritual law. That carnal commandment stuff was Moses, Ten Commandments written on tablets and stone and things like that. So we don't have no problems. It says. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there's verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Y'all hear this? Do y'all hear this? It say, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Now he's talking about I would like your response. Focus on the difference in paying tithes and the transfer of blessing as it relates to Abraham when he first met. That's the second thing we're going to deal with. But he also asks that he, he said, I'd like to get your view on the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7. We just read in it, dealing with the change of the order from Levitical priesthood and its relationship to sons of God. Now, everything what we read in is involving us because this is involving Jesus Christ. This whole chapter talking about Jesus Christ. It's not talking about no. You get what I'm saying? It's talking about his office of priesthood and it's going to last forever. And there's a, there's a there's a change. Change of the order from Levitical priesthood. To sons of God. So when it says, for, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. So them things that they took ties was in the commandments. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and, and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made of, excuse me, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. <clears throat> And they truly were made priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us. No, the Catholic priest. For such a high priest became us. No, the Pope Francis. For such, it don't say that, brothers and sisters. This is what it say in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. For such an high priest became us. This is what he's talking about. Who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. So when he asked me, can you speak about the change of the order from Levitical priesthood and this relationship to sons of God. This is what he's asking. This is what we're speaking about.
so that change in this promise that was given to Jesus being the high priest, it was given to us. This is the same thing we read about in Peter when it says, but ye are chosen generation, but ye are a holy nation, but ye are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people that you should show forth praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, for such an high priest became us who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. Oh, whoa, whoa. Remember them, them priests before, they had to sit up in the temple, remember? They had to go up in the temple and give sacrifice. Nobody couldn't go in them temples. They had to give sacrifice for themselves and keep the fire burning, keep that candle lit. And nobody couldn't go up in there. And they had to keep it lit all day. So this, this has all been changed with Jesus. It, look, read it. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27. Who needeth not daily, not daily, that they had to do this every day as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins see remember when jesus taught us that remember when the priests are um profane and blasphemous the temple on the sabbath day so remember when david went up in the temple so for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's for this he did once when he offered up himself for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity but the word of the oath which was made which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore see who is consecrated forevermore so the law make men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who was consecrated forevermore. Now, I, it talks about the laws is written in our hearts after that. It talks about the new covenant. He's the mediator of the New Testament. Then he goes into the blood of the Testament, talks about how Christ, the perfect sacrifice. Now, he wanted me to deal with the difference in paying tithes and the transfer of blessing. We dealt with the difference with paying tithes because we read it in... Um, even when you read... Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 27, when it talks about who needed not daily to offer up sacrifice, them was offerings. And when it's talking about for the priesthood being changed, there's made a necessity, a change also of the law. So all them tithes and offerings was in the law. So we can read that. It says, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. So it tells you we not under that law. Not no tithes and offerings. And it even talks about the tithes and offerings when you jump in there. Now I just read Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19. And I also read. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. Now I want to jump into Hebrews chapter 7, verse 5. It says, And verily, they that are the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So it tells us that these people were taking tithes but then it, and, and when you go into the two chapters that i just repeated 18 it tells us the, the law is disannulled and then it tells us there have been a change of the law so we know that jesus came and fulfilled we nobody giving no tithes you get what i'm saying so 
now we go into how it relates to the promise, the transfer of blessing as it relates to Abraham when he first met Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14, verse 17 through 23. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chidor, Chidorlomir and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavi, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Did he say that the Israelites own the land? I'm just playing, y'all. That's just this is still in Genesis, so that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich, save only that which the young men have eaten, and a portion of the men which went with me. E Ener, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. So, let's talk about how Melchizedek bless Abraham before he was Abraham and you hear him say give him tithes of all so tithes was never 10% really it was 10% of all everything you own but when he told him to take this is him telling him to, to take tithes because he would Melchizedek made it was a priest and he made Abraham a priest. So he was telling Abraham take tithes of all. Well, he gave him tithes of all. So finally, Jesus being the prince of peace verse Melchizedek being the king of peace in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. Thank you. He says, thank you. You're welcome, brother. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So this is the birth of the Prince of Peace. So he said, Melchizedek being the king of peace, the Prince of Peace verse Melchizedek being the king of peace. I was under intense attack just to send you this email i pray this bless you and many others in jesus name <clears throat> so for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So it's telling us about Jesus Christ before he was born this prophesy I always mention this but he's asking about this is speaking about 
Melchizedek, because at this time they had Melchizedek being the king of peace. But Jesus Christ came being the prince of peace. So. And it already told you what we just read about how he came and there was a change in the law and the commandments and everything. So once you know all these things, you read this back in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, it, it, you feel like, I don't, you don't feel, but you reading it different than the way how you read it before. For unto us, a child is born unto us. A son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. It's letting us know right there. It's going to be a, a change in the way how laws, the laws is kept. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. So he's going to be a counselor. The mighty God. Oh, he's going to be God. The everlasting father. Oh, wow. So he's going to be everlasting. The prince of peace. So he's not coming to, to bring physical war, right? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this so you think about the change in the priesthood then they telling you that a child will be born in isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 they still had the priesthood during this time because this was in isaiah so when we get into the new testament when jesus came We've seen this being fulfilled and other things that we never really thought about reading this, this, this verse. So you get more knowledge and wisdom about what Jesus did and other like everything he came to fulfill. So I want to go into this article. And we're going to talk about Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12 about the change of priesthood i just don't want to leave the brother with just that and answer his question i want to give him a little bit more hebrews chapter 7 verse 12 for the priesthood being changed there is made of necessity a change also of the law the priesthood established after the exodus from egypt when god after the exodus from egypt gave the order to Moses to set up the tabernacle, he also established the priesthood with the words, bring the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron the priest to assist him. Let me just go to Numbers chapter 3, verse 6 through 10. We get it. We're going to get it. Numbers chapter 3, verse 6 through 10. Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest that they may minister unto him and they shall keep his charge in the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle and they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation in the charge of the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And it says, From the twelve tribes of Israel, God, God appointed the tribe of Levi to serve in the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and later in the temple. They are called Levites in the Bible. God separated Aaron and his sons from among the Levites to be priests. Exodus 28 and 1. And take thou unto thee 
Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Elizer, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. So only they were allowed to hold the office of priests. God also appointed Aaron to be the high priest. The priests were helped in their task by the Levites. The cessation of the Levitical priesthood. After Jesus was taken prisoner, he was taken before the council where the high priest Caiaphas interrogated him because there was no suitable witnesses during this interrogation and Jesus remained silent. The high priest said at one point, I, let's go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 63. Matthew chapter 26, verse 63. But Jesus held his peace. But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus replied, 2664, Matthew chapter 26, verse 64. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Jesus said, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then Jesus, Matthew 26, 65. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. The high priest did not realize what he was doing. For in the rules of the Levitical priesthood, God had stipulated that the high priest, the one among his brothers who, had, who has had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been a ordained to wear the priestly garments must not let his hair become unkept or tear his clothes Leviticus 21 and 10 and he that is the high priest among his brethren upon whose head the anointing oil was poured and that is consecrated to put on the garments shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. Ooh, this is getting deep. Do y'all want to read Matthew 26? Y'all go back and read it again. Okay, now let's go in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 6. And Moses said unto Aaron and to Eleazar and unto Ithamar and his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well, the burning which the Lord hath kindled. So that's Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 6. So, do not let your hair become unkept and do not tear your clothes or you will die and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. That's what he got. But we good thing we read the exact scripture. Now, the high priest Caiaphas should have died because he tore his clothes. See, this getting deep, brothers and sisters. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Even though he did not die, he should at least have transferred his office to someone else. Neither one thing nor the other happened as a result of which he 
terminated his high priestly function by his disobedience to the law concerning the Levitical priesthood. The way towards a new priesthood was paved as a result. Hallelujah. The new priesthood. King David pr prophesied. The Lord said, nope, we going. To, let's go into Psalms, brothers and sisters. Psalms 110 and 1. Go into the book of Psalms. 110 and 1. Charge this phone up so we don't have no issues. I'm on 82%, so we good. Um, Psalms. So this is what. So Psalms 110. So the high priest Caiaphas should have died because he tore his clothes. So let's see what. Even though he did not die, he should he should at least have transferred his office to someone else. Neither one thing nor the other happened as a result of which he terminated his high priestly function by his disobedience to the law concerning the Levitical priesthood. The way toward towards a new priesthood was paved as a result. So this new priesthood, we're going to speak about what King David prophesied in Psalms 110 and 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay, so let's go to Psalms 1, 10, and 4. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So God referred thereby to a priesthood that was not based on the human lineage of Aaron, but in the order of Melchizedek. So Hebrews 7 and 2, we're going to see what the name, what the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. So Hebrews 7 and 2. To whom also Aaron gave a tenth part of all first, being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So who is Melchizedek? The book of Genesis states that when Abraham had achieved the victory over the kings of the east, in order to free his nephew Lot and his family, he had a special encounter. Let's go to Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. Leviticus 14 and 18 says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. So, God had already established a heavenly priesthood, which was recognizable by the symbols of bread and wine long before King David's prophecy. Jesus had probably already received this appointment as priest in the order of Melchizedek before God created the world and not at the time David pronounced the prophecy. Peter writes, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20, Peter writes, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Jesus came to the world to establish this priesthood here on earth. When he established the Lord's Supper, he gave the symbolical signs of bread and wine, the spiritual significance.
and he, Jesus, took bread. Well, let's go to Luke 22 and 19. Luke 22 and 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. That was Luke 22 and 19. Also, we're going to read Luke 22 and 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Bread and wine actually only acquired their full meaning when Jesus' body, the bread, was broken, and his blood, the wine, was poured out on the cross of Golgotha. On the cross, Jesus made the sacrifices in his body that had been made by the Levitical high priest once a year on the great day of atonement. Since the Levitical priesthood on earth had now been brought to an end by the high priest Caiaphas tearing his clothes, Jesus was able to act as the only priest and he made these sacrifices in accordance with the law concerning the great day of atonement as high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Um, because Jesus came to the world as high priest, it is quite possible that his clothes were therefore not allowed to be torn when he was crucified. Let's go into John chapter 9, verse 24 and read about this. Let's learn, learn about this. John chapter 19, verse 24. They did not tear his clothes. John chapter 19, verse 24. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. So, when he set up the Levitical priesthood, God established a service of sacrifices for the atonement of the sins of the people, in particular by the special sacrifices that were to be made once a year during the Day of Atonement. These sacrifices on the great Day of Atonement were only allowed to be made by the high priest. Jesus came to this world to give the spiritual significance to the symbols of his priesthood by making these sacrifices in his body as high priest in the new priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus was only able to make these sacrifices according to the priest, according to the prescribed manner after the Levitical high priest on duty had paved the way for this new priesthood to be established on earth. So let's talk about the changes that resulted from this. In a letter to the Hebrews in chapter 7, verse 10, a detailed explanation of the high priesthood of Jesus is given with by way of introduction. If um, if perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come one in the order of melchizedek not in the order of aaron for when the priesthood is changed the law must be changed also he of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar and what we have seen is even more clear if another priest like melchizedek appears on the basis of the power of an indestructible life for it is declared you are a priest forever in the order of melchizedek the former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless for the law made nothing perfect and 
a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. And when God said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind or not repent. I'm just reading what they have here. It's from a um, newer Bible they have. You are a priest forever because of this oath. Jesus has become the grantor of a better covenant. Because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need. One, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens, unlike the other high priests. He does not need to offer sacrifices day after day for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11 through 28 again. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evidence that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment gone before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made with an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, Thou the, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And we got to go to 28. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. No, they come to God by Allah. It don't say that, brothers and sisters. It say, wherefore, he is able also to save them. Not Allah, not Buddha. It say, not um, um, nation of Islam. It say, wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, Jesus Christ, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for him, not by the church of Scientology and um, Ron Hubbard, for such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. See, hallelujah. So now, it is important to realize that the temple service in Jerusalem had largely lost its purpose after the death and resurrection of Jesus in view of the fact that the Levitical priesthood was terminated and replaced by Jesus' eternal priesthood in, order, in the order of Melchizedek. Let's talk about the change of the law. As already mentioned in this study, if um, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11 through 12, if therefore perfection 
whereby the Levitical priesthood for under it, the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? God himself says of the laws under the Levitical priesthood that were received after the exodus from Egypt. Le Leviticus chapter 18 verse 4 through 5. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 4 through 5. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 4 through 5. A new law is applicable since... The establishment of the high priesthood of Jesus on earth, however. Let's go on to Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Romans 10 and 6. But the righteousness which is, which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. If you declare with your mouth, let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 11. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 11. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, as Romans 10, verse 9 through 11, right? No. Now we're going to get Romans 10, verse 9 through 11. I just, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth the confession confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now. Let's go to Romans chapter eight, verse one through four. There's therefore now. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually, mind, spiritually minded is life and peace. All glory be to God. So now, this is why Jesus is so beautiful, powerful, and wonderful. Look, notice how important this is. So are the Old Testament laws abolished? No. These laws are not abolished, but Jesus places them in a new light of day. Because if we read Romans chapter 8, verse 4, it says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 4. The Old Testament laws were unable to achieve their goal because no one was able to live in complete accordance with them, as a result of which everyone remained under the curse. Nor were the sacrifices able to ensure that anyone would be able to live forever in God's presence. As a result, God did not achieve his goal of entering into a personal relationship with the people because Jesus as the sinless high priest sacrificed himself he took the curse of the law upon himself and acquired a complete eternal atonement through faith in him as a result who whoever becomes his disciple obeys him during his life and receives these laws of this new priesthood in his heart becomes himself a priest in the order of Melchizedek. No, go to the Catholic priest, becomes himself a priest in the order of Melchizedek. What about Pope Francis? Bow down, he bowing down, kissing the African feet. No, becomes himself a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Under the high priesthood of Jesus, the law contains a, the deeper spiritual meaning of the law's of the Old Testament. This can be seen clearly in the teaching of Jesus and how he put these laws into practice in daily intercourse as recorded in the Gospels. This is why Matthew 5 repeats continually, you have heard that it was said to the people long time ago, but I tell you, and he gives instructions to his disciples to live according to the laws that he summarizes with the well-known words if you keep oh let's go to john chapter 15 and 10. if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So. And and then John chapter 13, verse 34. John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. See? New commandment. Jesus Christ, high priest forever, changing the priesthood. So, I hope this study and this lesson helped y'all out. Now I'm trying to get back to some of these comments. play yeah we 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 seen you seen y'all tokyo said i'm from jordan bro 12 tries poi bring out the truth yes brother that's all we can do
Jesus name. So what we just learned today was the change in the priesthood. You had the Leviticus priesthood and then you had an order of the priesthood change when Jesus came. And that was something new that I actually learned today that the high priest, that he wasn't supposed to uh, do what he did. But we just learned in that in this chapter, I want to go back and highlight certain things. Caiaphas, he not, um, so he tore Jesus' clothes, but the high priest, he broke the rules of Levitical priesthood that God has stipulated that the high priest, the one among his brothers who has been the anointing it who had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments must not let his hair become unkept or tear his clothes. Then Moses said to Aaron in Leviticus 10 and 6, then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Elizar and Ithamar, do not let your hair become unkept and do not tear your clothes or you will die and the Lord will be angry with the whole community and the high priest Caiaphas should have died because he tore his clothes even though he did not die he should have at least transferred his office to someone else neither one thing nor the other happened as a result of which he terminated his highly priestly function by his disobedience to the law concerning the Levitical priesthood the way toward a new priesthood was paved as a result. So that was interesting because uh, something I learned today, I didn't know that Catholics try to compartmentalize the nature of God too. Y'all have a lot in common. Yeah. A lot of Catholics do call themselves priests, but We never seen the word Catholic in the Bible. Aren't they just messengers of God? They supposed to lead people to Jesus Christ if they call themselves a church, though. Aren't they just messengers of God? And we actually don't know anything about God. No, we learn about God every day here. This is a true and living church of God. Yeah, we know Jesus is God. And I got one of them orders for them shirts. I'm going to check it out soon. Whoever requested that order I'm about to send it out I'm gonna have them send it out if y'all want to check the Jesus is God shirts out you can check my about me section on my channel where my links are if you want to support I should actually have physical shirts coming in a few days actually all glory be to God they already been sent out, so looking forward to those because I'll, I'll need some new shirts. We are seeds of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's power. King Gray, son. Yes. So we learned a lot today. Okay, I got you, Topper. You said Isaiah chapter 58, verse 4 through 11. Let me go there right now. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 4 through 11. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Some of y'all only keep the Sabbath to glorify y'all flesh. That's why I be saying things like that.
Because I this word in my heart, I ain't even read this, but this say Israel's way of fasting. Wherefore, I'm going to get it from chapter 3. Wherefore, have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. See, they only keep, keep the Sabbath to glorify their flesh. Muslims too, they glorify their flesh during Ramadan, not get closer to God. All on the internet, making videos and stuff. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Woo, ye shall not fast as ye did this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Muhammad telling everybody, it's Ramadan. I ain't going to tell nobody. Y'all seen that movie Friday when the crackhead man Ezel said, when Smokey said, don't tell nobody. He was back there going in the bathroom outside in the bushes. He ran back. That's what Muhammad did. God said, yeah, when you fast, go do it in secret. Don't tell nobody. And your father who see it in secret will reward thee openly. Muhammad pulled the crackhead Ezel. He said, it's Ramadan. We fasting. What God just said, he said, don't tell nobody. That's a hardened heart, stiff neck, unstable, delusional. He rests at like like at that scripture. Muhammad rests like he did all the other scriptures to his own destruction. Who told Muhammad to call himself a prophet? Why he put the word apostle in the in the Quran? Who told him to say that Mary was the queen of heaven? That Catholic monk that he got all that knowledge from. Or maybe Satan when he was in a cave and he was getting deceived where he thought the second time it was God. But the first time he said it was Satan talking to him. Then all of a sudden he said an angel came and talked to him. Muhammad didn't know what was going on in that cave. He didn't know who was talking to him. But let's continue. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? And thou seest not, wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fists of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. It's Ramadan, y'all. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I, I got I can't do it no other way. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that she break every yoke? It is not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of the of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speaketh and speak in vanity and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday and the lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fell not. How many Muslims are, are going to stop um, fasting during Ramadan right now and become followers of Jesus Christ? Right now, let me get a witness right now in the comment section that's a Muslim that's going to quit Ramadan right now, and you're just going to follow Jesus Christ because he's God. Let me get a Muslim witness in here and say, Jesus Christ is God. I'm not doing Ramadan no more. 
I want to see a Muslim name too. I want to see a Muslim name. We got a lot of Muslims that come watch us, brothers and sisters. Let me get a testimony. I, I just gave you something you can read. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 4 to 11. And I broke it down rightfully. Eating good, y'all. Certified bananas. Organic. It is such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou shout, will thou shout this fast and on? It's a acceptable day to the Lord. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free and to break? Yep. I said, y'all only keep the Sabbath and Ramadan to glorify y'all flesh. That's the fast we need to be following right there. And we need to do it how Jesus said it in secret. He said, don't give your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. When thou doest thine arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do it. How do I tell my girl, best friend, I like her, I need help. Write her a letter with a Bible verse. No, I just tell her you like her. I, it's simple. They believe Jesus is just a prophet, nothing else. So what is Muhammad? If y'all just believe Jesus is a prophet, what is Muhammad? Let me see. Melchizedek, Amir, may peace be upon you, bro. Good to see you. Kasim Razag, he said, Melchizedek had no mother or father and had no start and no end. Does that also make him God or son of God or just as good as Jesus? I'm confused. No, Melchizedek has, they was, they had sins. All these people had to give sacrifice for their own sins and for the people's sins. Jesus ain't have no sin. That's why they kept saying, who is this that can forgive sins but God? Because they, they, they was used to their high priests already being sinners. So you got to look at the Bible with a real spiritual, biblical Christ-like mind. The Holy Spirit start to teach you these things. Judah tribe squad. That's the line where my name came from. Oh, okay, Zara. That's wonderful. Man, this heat hit my eyes.
just I'm gonna y'all I just put y'all in time out. Give you a little 30 minute time out. In Jesus' name, we rebuke every um unclean spirit in the chat. That's what y'all are. I'm not about to call y'all names that's not biblical. I sit up here and keep calling y'all bots or trolls and stuff. Y'all are unclean spirits. In Jesus' name, I command y'all to start speaking righteous words, words of God. If you disagree with the Bible, show us what chapter and verse you disagree with so we can help you and we can teach you. We love y'all. We we rather not argue. We'd rather teach y'all. We It's not even arguing, but it, it's like a baby crying and they don't have to cry. That know how to talk. That's how y'all. That's how we looking at y'all in the spirit. If you ask, you will receive. But if you keep acting out, just like I, I don't like God, so let me do this. You get what I'm saying? I don't like God. I don't like righteousness. I don't like instructions. I don't like judgment. I don't like righteous law. I don't like truth. So let me just try to act out like a baby. I can't get no toys out of this store, so let me just mess up the whole store. There's no spiritual gifts up for me in this in um in this house. Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. The Holy Ghost has true power. Unlike false idols and your false idol, Rephim. Yeah, Rephim, all them gods y'all pray to, it's too many to name. They don't have power like the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Israel. Ye are gods, Psalms 82, yeah. When they say ye are gods, you notice it's a small case G, right, brother? In John 10, 34. All right, Psalms 82, verse 6 and 7. I'm about to show you right now. Psalms 82, verse 6 and 7 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So when they say ye are gods and you're going to die like men, that don't mean you God eternal everlasting going to live forever like Jesus because he is God. So when they say God's, that's why it's a lowercase G. When they always mention a true and living God, you see a capital G. And then even when you read Psalms 82, one, it say God, capital G, standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods, small case G false gods see look at psalms 82 and just read the whole chapter brothers and sisters start at one see how it say god's capital g and then the other one is a small case g so when they say ye are gods they're not talking about you're not you're not the most high you made in the image and likeness of god we not god So Psalms 82, verse 6 through 7, and then we got John chapter 10, verse 34. John chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law, 
I said ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, you notice how it capital G and small g's again. And the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the father hates sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemous because I said I am the son of God. See? So he didn't call himself like that. They always called him God before with a capital G. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 when they prophesy. You see, it's a small case and then a capital. Y'all, once you read it, you'll know exactly what it means. And then Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, when they said the mighty God, they didn't put no small case G. That's capital. It'll let you know that will be his title, his name. That's his, That's how he will operate. That's how his actions will show and prove. His prophecies will fulfill that he's the mighty God, capital G. Like the same as God before when Moses told him, I am sent you. The same God from Genesis 1 and 1 that created the heavens and the earth is the same God that Jesus is in the flesh. He came in the flesh and was God in the flesh with the same spirit that created the heavens and the earth in Genesis. He was there in Genesis. Um, deep state USO, I mean, deep state USO, I mean, deep state USA, my bad. You said there's a, you said Christians support us by design. There's a nice little warrior, there a nice little warrior ant class. See, this is the thing. Y'all think when y'all talk about Christians, that y'all not talking about Hebrews, but you don't know the first Christians were Hebrews, you dummy. They were first called Christians in Antioch. So you're talking about every tribe from the Bible, really. You're talking about all of Moses' disciples, too. It ain't no separation. They caused division, but the true believers and followers who walk in the spirit, you know, the whole Bible go together. The Old Testament is not separate from the New they didn't quote their own scriptures. When they came in the New Testament, they quoted stuff from the old. So it's not separate. The disciples were not Gentiles. They were Hebrews. So when you say, oh, yeah, you got you got a problem with the whole body of Christ. You got a problem with every believer, Moses disciples and Jesus disciples. But I don't know who the deep state USA is. How about you email me and identify yourself? We could talk face to face, eye to eye on Instagram. All right. I don't like secrets. The Bible say don't keep no secrets. Everything you do in secret will be proclaimed on the housetops. So I don't know when I called out Kamala Harris that got y'all attention or whoever. But let's talk. You can ask me any question. Um, John chapter 5 verse 43 I am come in my father's name title and ye receive me not if another shall come in his own name him ye will receive Muslims of Islam you accepted Muhammad in his own name that's facts let's read John chapter 5 verse 43 John chapter 5, verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. God didn't make Muhammad no prophet because in the word of God that he stole from and called himself a prophet and put apostle in the Quran, he called Mary the queen of heaven. God didn't tell him to go out and call himself 
a prophet without prophesying and keeping the commandments of the prophets before he didn't fulfill no prophecy because ain't nobody tell you about no prophet named Muhammad that was going to come out of Islam and do all that. They said they're going to arise false prophets and false apostles. The only the Old Testament is full of prophecies that got fulfilled by Jesus helps proving that Jesus was and is the Messiah. So it is important and it's full of examples for us to see what's right and wrong to do. Yeah. The greatest book ever written by Incorruptible Seed. It's not a story. It's a book of prophecy. And if you take and add to this book of prophecy, the, 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 um, in Revelation, it tells you, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed are anyone who keeps the sayings of this book. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of, of this book. This is a book of prophecy. It's not just a story. It says, Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, of them, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. It says, It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these sayings, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. See? So once Muhammad said that he believed Jesus is a prophet and then he went against and took away from these words in his book of prophecy, he set himself up for persecution and to be condemned because nobody told Muhammad to put the word apostle in the Quran to call himself a prophet. Satan deceived them. Who y'all call it? The shaitan? That's who told Muhammad to do all that stuff. I didn't get no emails from no Muslim imams. So I guess everything I'm saying about Muhammad, nobody wants to tell me that what I'm saying is not biblical because they can't show it in the Bible. But I'm saying everything in their Quran telling them about Muhammad that they can't even tell me I'm wrong. See? Because I, I do the research. All praise to Israel, deep state USA. All praise to God, the creator. Drex, amen. Brother, those who choose Christ have access to eternal life. All right, so he said, yes, Jesus came in his father's name, but betrayed him by sacrificing himself instead of Judas. Judas was supposed to be the sacrificial lamb, but Jesus and Judas conspired to trade places just before. All right, so. Judas was not fulfilled to become the prophet to save the people so it was Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him and um 
if Judas would have been the sacrificial lamb, he would have been the high priest and all of the things that we just read about. So, no, that's not accurate, brother. But good question. And that did happen. G Judas did betray Jesus, but he wasn't supposed to be the sacrificial lamb. What happened with him was what happened. He hung himself after he, because he couldn't bear that, knowing that he would have to walk around and be condemned by a lot of Jesus' followers because there was a lot of Jews that believed in Jesus too. It wasn't just the Gentiles. But they didn't understand and they didn't want to believe that he was God. They said, who can forgive sins but God? That right there is telling you when he said all sins can be forgiven. Look, the one John came, he he was baptizing people for their sins. You got to look into the how the history of the Bible came in existence. The priests in the Old Testament had to give sacrifices for their sins. And the people's sins. This is where you get this nobody perfect but God and we all fall short of glory. They looking at half of the, the book of prophecy or something. Because when you see the, what Jesus did and you put all your, all your trust in him, call on him, that make you want to overcome things. It give you the strength and the spirit. The children of God will be as God, living forever. Yeah, Kasim Raz Razag, there is context before and after each verse. That's why when I do read the scriptures, I make sure I read before and after the verses sometimes. Or if I'm proving a point, I just read the, 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 the exact scripture. But if y'all ask me a question, I won't just read the exact scripture. I read before and after to get context of what they're saying. Like when they try to say Solomon was said he was black, he was talking about his soul. Wasn't talking about his skin complexion. He was a Hebrew Israelite. Why would he say I'm black? Black people ain't come into existence to the 1600s. I am hidden in Christ and Christ in God. Colossians 3 and 3. All right, we're going to go there real quick. Colossians 3 and 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ and God. If you're not a believer, then you are not as God. We are supposed to form humanity. Our spirits are divine sparks. No, we will not mingle with you. Yes, yeah, separate and set apart. You will be discarded into the pit. See, look, deep state USA, deep state USA, you say Islam and Christianity is our invention. Who is our? Who is our? You got a business where you invented it? What's your business address? And give us your business number too. So we can call and, 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 and get a, a, a details of what your job is. Because you said you invented something. what You got it registered, right? You got trademarks and copyright and it's registered. You got a business, LLC and all that, right? Where's your business address? Since you saying um, Islam and Christianity is our invention, who's our? I would love for you to identify yourself, Deep State USA. You saying our like... 
It's a business. So what's the name of your business or company or association? What's the name of your company? And Christianity is Constantine's invention because Christianity was not created by Jesus Christ nor none of the disciples. They were Christians, but they were Hebrew Israelites and they all of the Gentiles be first came Christians in Antioch. So you never read the word Christianity in the Bible. So yeah, you are right. You didn't create the Bible. Thank you for telling us. No man ain't create the Bible and you're proving that. You created Christianity. That's not the same thing as the Christian faith as Jesus Christ followers that we read about in the book of Acts. So thank you for clarifying and separating the true Christian faith and the Christians in the Bible between Christianity. That's where they go to church on Sunday, take tithes and offerings. When we see Jesus Christ already died on the cross, ain't no more offerings for sins. So what you doing tithes for? And that was the, the, the priesthood. See, thank you for asking that question. I love you, Deep State USA. And I'm we waiting for your, uh, who is we? Yeah, we waiting for that. Who is we? Jesus said, take this cup away from me, Father. Jesus never wanted to be sacrificed and prayed to the Father to be saved. I am saved by his blood. Amos chapter 5, verse 26. Let me see. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Shion, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. You must be on East Coast, brother. Yeah, Stephen. I'm upstate New York. Ain't no three gods in Christianity, because them there's only one God. We just read that when somebody came in the chat in the beginning of this live, asked me what I think about um, gnosticism. How do you feel about Russians? I love Russians. I, I love everybody. I love every country, every nation, every president. I, I speak out against things that don't line up with God's word. That's all. Sometimes like you'll have problems in the United States and America that can't be solved by no human. But if you have people come together and work with leaders from other countries, they solve these problems sometimes. They can help solve some of these problems like the uh, the police. They get they, they get trained from like. Uh, I don't want to say Israel, but it's like some type of training they get from another country. That's why when we see like a lot of things, how they operate over here in America, they were taught that from militaries in other countries, like the whole stop and frisk stuff we seen or, you know, they just do certain things. forgot what country it was where they learned a lot of these tactics but I feel like working together with other countries like Russian presidents Vladimir Putin or something like that certain problems that we face in our country can be resolved because we have a lot of Russian Americans Russians living in America so all it takes is people to come together and speak on things that's unrighteous that we want to see change just like how you have that um brother d1 standing up starting a petition because he wants we I, me 
and a lot of millions of people want to see change with the music we want better music so he's trying to take an initiative to do something so i signed a petition if y'all ever have some time go check it out if you're interested in things like that but i know only god can change but he will use people so when i see something i look in the spirit and it feel like well and not the way it feel like but i can see that it's of god i'll support it all the prophets and messengers came with one message that your lord and my lord and our lord is one then all of a sudden jesus comes along and says nah fam there's three make that make sense all right when all of the prophets and messengers came with one message explain to me isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 prophesying jesus explain to me david prophesying jesus in the psalms Explain to me all of the Old Testament scriptures that talks about how he would die on the cross. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 calls him the mighty God. That's prophesying before he was even born. So if all the prophets and messengers came with one message that your Lord and my Lord and our Lord is one, that one Lord is Jesus Christ. All of a sudden Jesus come and says, nah fam, there's three. He didn't say there's three. He came in freedom from the law of the curse of the law under that was that law that was written on stone tablets. That was the law of the flesh. Now he came with the spiritual law and he was God in the flesh. I don't get what's so difficult about this, but I guarantee you there's a lot of people that's going to learn and see these scriptures and see exactly what I'm saying. Before Abraham was, I am. He's the beginning and the end and the alpha and omega. The world was created by him and it knew him not. He came to his own and they received him not. But as many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. God is good, Liam O'Brien. Amen. Love from California. May Christ protect my brethren. I'm on my way to prayer. I pray for you all. Thank you, Stephen Chavez. Sitting in this car. My eyes be burning sometimes. Because this heat. Did Adam worship the sun? The Father and the Holy Spirit? Well, they didn't have the Holy Spirit when Adam and Eve. Well, actually, the Holy Spirit was God, the Spirit of God. So, the Son, who is Jesus Christ, wasn't born yet. So, how can... <coughs> How can Adam worship him when he wasn't born? You know who worshiped him? The three wise men that followed the, the, the stars. And they came and worshiped him at his feet and brought gifts and stuff like that. That's who worshiped him. Everybody that he did a lot of miracles on, they fell down at his feet and worshiped him. That's who worshiped him. And we gave, he's just, he's just watching all my teachings and coming back asking questions that he can ask in the comment section or he can email me and we can talk on Instagram and I'll answer all his questions in a one hour video. I'm not about to just answer only your questions, brother. This is because I have never spoken on my own authority or of my own accord or as self-appointed, but the father who sent me. Hold up, get some heat up in here. But the father who sent me has himself given me orders concerning what to say and what to do. Exactly, Sandy. I sub, can I please get a shout out? Carolyn Whit Whitham Talbot, thank you for the sub. Peace be unto you. Sandy says, John chapter 12, verse 49. Hold up. We going into John chapter 12, verse 49.
For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Jesus said he didn't speak of himself, but the Father that sent him gave him a commandment and what he should speak. Y'all keep trying to say it's how did Jesus come and say he's separate than God and there's three gods now? No, it's one God. Amelia Turner, please do not. You are false God. I should have left your comment up, but I deleted it. I removed your comment, Amelia Turner. You could still leave comments. I didn't remove you or put you on timeout, but you said I am God with a lowercase g. Yeah, you are somebody that worships witchcraft. You like to play with crystals, tarot cards, and do things that God said is considered an abomination. So when you write God, like you probably have a husband or a boyfriend who thinks he's a nation's of God and earth. Like P. Diddy and a lot of rappers in the music industry are nations of gods and earth. They believe that they're God. Clarence the 13X started the nations of gods and earth. Um, Wu-Tang, all these dudes, Nas, Jay-Z, they think they're God. I think Kanye West is, is a nation God and earth. I don't know if he recently just j became, you know, ODB son, nations of gods and earth. So there's a lot of people in the music industry. Oh yeah, I think Jay Electronica, J they, all these dudes are think they're God. So if their wife, they tell their wives that they're the earth, that's what they think. Like, And then they call their children the seed or something like that. So they think they got all this knowledge and they talk to each other in a specific language. And it's weird to me. They say, what's today's mathematics? Peace, God. So they got a special way how they talk. It's a religion. That's ain't nothing but a religion. They talk a certain way. They got certain codes and rules to follow. But your religion don't line up with the true and living God from the Bible. And y'all really think y'all are God. And the Bible says whoever exalt himself will be debased. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It says. Um, it says. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and um, bringing into captivity every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So the knowledge of God is the word of God. So when people go against God's commandments and you want people to worship you and God said we should only worship him, then that's an abomination. That's the spirit of error. Jesus is king. Amen. Jesus is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Slow foe. God bless you. Get her, Rini, in the comment section. Hit her with a few scriptures. She says she's God. Can you shout me out? I have like 50 subs. B B M Fartworth. Fartworth. May peace be unto you with the 50 subs. If you email me, I know people that can help you get subscribers and build your channel up. Jesus didn't defeat the God of the Old Testament Yahweh he was sent by Yahweh and did exactly what Yahweh sent him for if anybody want to build up their YouTube channel and get subscribers email me bad B um I, is that what country is that bad B white blue and red flag if I pray in the name of a false God would the prayers be answered yeah, they'll be answered. You won't get no, no blessings, though. 
I used to pray up in, look, I used to do some crazy prayers, bro. They taught us, look, you know how when I was a Muslim, how I had to pray? We had to hold our feet a certain type of way. And then you have to put like five, I'm not even going to do it. You have to put like seven fingers in the air. And it's like weird to me now that I think about it because nobody in the Bible prayed like that. They ain't never say nobody put no seven fingers, two on the right hand. and five. Nobody prayed like that. That ain't biblical. So I was doing this stuff. And um, I thought I was spiritually protected. But it was me doing everything on my own and not letting God protect me in his word and his spirit. So... I was lost. I was lost. All glory be to God. So yeah, if you pray in the name of a false God, the devil gonna answer your prayers. Not God. Kashim Ross quiz, Genesis seven and one. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Yo, name a car for an edit. He come in the comment section every day saying the same thing. For Taurus, bro. He said, Come into the ark. When Jesus did it, Kawhi Green, peace be upon you. The Jews who were there gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me. See? Five cent minor. What's wrong with my eyeballs? What's wrong with my eyeballs is I have this phone in a holder. I got the heat on 74 beaming out in my eyes. So it's hot. And I keep blinking and it's, it's, it's go shooting right into my eyes. This vent is right here. I'm sitting. I'm not leaning back or nothing. I got my seat up closer than I normally sit. So that's what's wrong with my eyes, man. And then sometime looking in this camera and this screen, I don't know. Between this heat and looking in this screen, that's why, I, let me move this phone. I just like, when I turn the camera around, I wanna give y'all a view. Cause if I turn the camera around, you ain't gonna see nothing when I put it like that. At least you got a little view like that. Man, this was a, a beautiful stream, y'all. I enjoy doing this. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Diddy. Alright, man. This dude acting crazy. Get him out of here. If he, you, you got one more time, bro. Talking about my eyes. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Also, 
In the beginning, the Father, Creator, created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, hovered over the waters, and God said in John 1, 1, let there be light. Jesus said, they said that this ain't organic if it don't have seeds. So you think bananas just grow on their own or they grow off a banana tree? They grow off a tree, right? So it would have to be an organic seed to make the bananas grow off the tree, right? See, when you despise knowledge, say fools despise knowledge, you won't even think of the truth. It's not that hard to figure out how a banana is grown, bro. You see bananas grow off trees. You don't see them grow out the ground, do you? All right, then. So it's a seed that they plant. The same way they can plant a regular seed, they can plant an organic seed. You can grow bananas right probably in your backyard if you got land. Jesus said, God is a spirit, therefore we must worship him in spirit and in truth. The first depiction of God is as a spirit moving amongst the waters of the deep. Thank you, Drex. That's what I always mention them. I thought they'd be caught up now because a lot of my old teachings, I always said, God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So I thought that they were caught up and they watched a lot of them teachings. But I, I got to remember, it's new people that come in every day. Some of them might see this channel for the first time and just see one video so i sometimes might have to keep repeating the same things hey what's up lewis jordan yeah i'm cool genesis one and two let me just go there so now we know god is a spirit and those that worship god must worship him in spirit and truth and Genesis says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the spirit of God, God is a spirit. That same spirit of God was in Jesus Christ. Now, he was God in the flesh because he came and fulfilled every prophecy of this book. He was the Messiah that they were talking about. They were all waiting and looking for him. And it was prophesied of his birth that he would come and save Israel. Hey, what's your name? Co Kokian, Kokian, Kimi. All religion is esoteric and about nature and stars. I know what your name is. I just didn't want to say that word. I said Kokian, Kokian, or Kokian, Kokian, Kimi. Kokai and Kimi, all religion is esoteric and about nature and stars. Show me one scripture, chapter, and verse in the Bible where Jesus told us to study the nature and stars. I wait. Jesus was different. He ain't teach the way your Freemasonic leaders teach you. Talking about the Bible is a book about astrology. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, To see, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Ori, the son of Hur, or Hur, or, yeah, Hur, or Ur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God and wisdom and in
You said that Melchizedek achieved Christ spiritually, but was not appointed to die for our sins. Islam ain't no truth, man. Islam is false. Muhammad was a false prophet. He wasn't leading people to God. Louis Jordan, that's your, that's whatever you love, that's on you. As long as you love women, I don't care if you love them Chinese or Vietnamese. It is by his blood that we are saved. And in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. But how do we carry ourselves based off of that? You got Exodus 31. I'm going to read Exodus 31. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by my name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, behold, I have given with him a, a holy lab, the son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan, and 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 in the hearts of all that are wise hearted have I I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. The tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is thereupon and all the furniture of the tabernacle and the table and his furniture and the pure candlestick with all his furniture and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture in the laver in his foot in the cloths of service and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place according to all that I have commanded they shall thee shall they do according to all that I have commanded thee shall they do and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days May the work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days doth the Lord make heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written in the finger of God. Now, Jesus came and he kept healing people on the Sabbath. They kept telling him he's breaking the Sabbath and they were trying to put him to death. He told them that the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. I work and my, my father worked either too and I do too. He said, Moses gave you the Sabbath day, not because it's of Moses, but because it's of God. And on the Sabbath day, you circumcised the man. 
He said, what about when the priests go into the temple and are blasphemous on the Sabbath day and profane the temple? He said, what about when David went into the temple on the Sabbath day and did what wasn't lawful? He ate the shoe bread and gave some to those that was with him. That wasn't lawful for him to eat, only the priests. So he came and just like told him, like, y'all don't keep the Sabbath day. Y'all got to give sacrifice offerings for y'all sins on the Sabbath that y'all breaking. Y'all did evil on the Sabbath day. But I'm making a man whole on the Sabbath and you going to tell me that I got a devil? You seen first fruits of truth? He on here. Now, I don't know who that is. Million dollar views. But shout out to first fruits of truth. Whoever that is. He's in my chat or you just saying he's on YouTube. Sheila Chitwameli. What is your favorite verse in the Bible? One of my favorite verses, I'd say, is I'll say maybe the prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's one of my favorite. I got a lot of favorite verses. I love I love all of the Bible, but. That's one of my favorite verses. Because that right there. That bring the presence of God right, right, right to you. The spirit of God comes upon many people in the Old Testament. Elijah and Elisha were both given a portion of the spirit. Yeah. Elijah and Elisha both resurrect the resurrections in the Old Testament. One of them resurrected two people and the other one resurrected one person. Nothing wrong with like liking white women. Black and white women are in the same light. If you all me sinners. Hmm. Stephen's speech one then said the high priest are these things so and he said men brethren and fathers hearken the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharan and said unto him get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall shew thee then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans dwelt in Sharan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for possession and to recede after him. So, let me see. And thy glory says, if she's a believer, it's fine. I used to say interracial marriage was wrong when I was into the Hebrews, Israelites doctrine, but it's Old Testament.
Yeah, in the Old Testament, the Israelites were only allowed to really have wives of their own, like, nation or something like that. But you ain't see Jesus teaching like that. He said, who is my sister, my mother, my brethren, those that do the will of my father, the same as my sister, brother, mother, brethren. Hello, world. Ryan Grace, what's up? In thy glory said, I was a Hebrew Israelite. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that, brother. You on my other channel, too. And you never told me the whole time. In thy glory, he knew me from my other channel. And Doc Glory, I give you permission. If you want to type my other channel in the comment section, go ahead. You could type my other channel name in the comment section if you want to. <laughs> All right, I'm back, y'all talk about this word <coughs> king of adrian we should never follow any god with a lowercase g because that's not leading you to jesus christ the true and living god is who jesus christ was was and he teach you about the commandments of God. And you learn about all of God's judgments and laws in the Old Testament too. And Jesus quotes a lot of things. He said, you have heard by them of old time. But I say unto you, whoever looketh on a woman with lust to lust after her in his heart, hath committed adultery with her already. He said, Moses told you to write a letter of divorcement because of the hardness of your hearts. But from the beginning, it wasn't like this. He said, God made a man and woman. And with, jo and with God joined together, let not man put asunder. Yeah, God can mean some some form of authority, but that authority is not always righteous authority. That authority is not always holy. Just because somebody used the word God don't mean it's going to be uh, the God that you used to. That's why you got to know. Are you talking about the God of the Bible, the true and living God, or are you making up gods like gods that made their self God? Jesus didn't make himself God. He was called God in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. He didn't make himself God. So that's the difference. There be gods many. But we know we worship the true and living God. That's God, 
He said, now I'm a soldier of Christ. Amen. Got the Israel flags up in here. Mr. Sparkle Tom. Peace be unto you. You said, so I know everyone Hebrew Israelite doctrine that they say, and it's out of context. Yeah, that all that stuff they talking is out of context, mostly, most of them. They be saying stuff that ain't biblical. They talking about they standing on the good, like they mixing Bible with new age information. I heard one of these Hebrew Israelites, I told you I caught one of them wearing crystals. I seen one of them on the live. He was on Instagram live. This brother talking about, yeah, I, you know I'm standing outside grounding right now. Where in the Old Testament it say, take your socks off and be grounding and standing in the grass? That's some new age spiritualist stuff. The people that say they spiritual that, that don't believe in the Bible. That's where you got that from. The, the, I didn't read that in the scriptures. Y'all claim y'all getting closer to God and all this stuff. You earthing and letting your body charge up and stuff like that. Davey says some of the weirdest stuff. I don't like, where did you learn this from? He said, yeah, I, you know, I'm earthing right now. He said, yeah, you know, I got my shoes and my socks off standing on the grass. And it's like, they don't care what type of um, insects or anything be on the ground. It, they Like, sometimes you might want to walk on the ground, but man, ain't nobody just walking in bare feet on the ground like that. Talking about we earth and charging our body up. Show me where did Moses do that? They wore sandals. What y'all talking about? They had shoes on, brothers and sisters. John the Baptist was not walking around barefoot. They wasn't walking around barefoot talking about I'm earthing <laughs> the Pharisees deem themselves the gods free Israel from what from the war if Isaiah and Jesus would come in his prophecy war is genocide okay May peace be upon Israel and Palestine. Trying to get to a few more comments. I think it's best we refrain from the term of calling ourselves gods, right? It doesn't seem right. Nope. Ezekiel 23 explains what happens when Jerusalem strays from the path of God. So we're going to read Ezekiel chapter 23. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one of one mother, excuse me. Son of man, 
there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breast press. And there they bruised the teeth of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola, the elder, and Abolaba, or Aholaba, her sister. And they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names Samaria and Ahola, and Jerusalem, Aholaba. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she dotted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen, riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she dotted, with all their idols she defiled herself. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breast of her virginity and poured their whoredom upon her. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, in the, in the hand of the Assyrians upon whom she dotted. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword, and she became famous among women for they had executed judgment upon her. And when her sister Aholaba saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredoms. She dotted upon the Assyrians and her neighbor, no, excuse me, she dotted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, Captains and rulers cloth most gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. So it ain't say they was ain't have no um they was walking around doing what y'all doing. When y'all say, Oh yeah, I I'm on the ground with my feet off on um I got my shoes and my socks off, I'm grounding right now. The Bible never even said grounding. That's a short. If somebody could remind me on that in the comment section, make a short about that. Then I saw that she was defiled. Oh, boy. It says, then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way. And that she increased her whoredoms. See? For when she, she saw men portrayed upon the wall the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion girded with girdles upon their loins exceeding in dried attire I mean in dyed attire upon their heads all of them princes to look to after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea the land of their, their nativity and as soon as she saw them with her eyes she dotted upon them and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom. And she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms and calling to remembrance the days of her youth wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she dotted upon their paramours whose flesh is as the flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus thou calledest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth and bruising thy teeth by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. Therefore, O Aholabah, 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, from whom thy mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side, the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekod and Shoah and Koah and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding upon horses, and they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons and wheels, and with an assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about, and I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments, and I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. They shall also strike thee out of thy clothes, and take away thy fair jewels. Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee, and thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt, so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt any more. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated, and they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredoms shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their idols. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister, therefore will I give her cup into thine hand. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn, and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out, and thou shalt break the shreds, or the shrewd, the the, the shirts thereof and pluck off thine own breast for I have spoken it saith the Lord God therefore thus saith the Lord God because thou hast forgotten me and cast me behind thy back therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms the Lord said moreover unto me son of man will thou judge Ahola and Abolaba and Aholaba, yeah, declare unto them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbath. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came for whom thou didst wash thyself, paintest thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments, and sattest upon a, a, stat, a, a stately uh, or a statily bed, and a table prepared before it, whereupon thou hast set mine incense and mine oil. And the voice of a multitude being at ease was with her, and with the men of the common sort, were brought Sabians from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their heads. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries, will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Yet they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. So they, so went they, so went they in, 
unto Ahola and unto Ahola Ba, the lewd women and the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them and will give them to be removed and spoiled. And the company shall stone them with stones and dispatch them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn up their houses with fire. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness and they shall recompense your lewdness upon you and ye shall bear the sins of your idols and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Powerful scripture right there, brother. I almost start crying in the middle of that. I got a little uh, tired of, in a little, but once I, once I start reading some of these things, it both me, um, I lost all that tiredness. I got almost tired of reading, but Ezekiel 23 explains what happens when Jerusalem strays from the path of God. That's what we just read right there. Talks about women that are harlots and women, people go after idols and stuff like that. It reminds you of what's happening today, right? Sounds like some stuff that you might have just seen people doing or you, you know people doing. It's like this stuff is don't feel like it was written. Don't feel like it was written 2000 years ago. It's like these prophecies we see and fulfilled today. Said their watchmen have become blind. They like dogs that don't bark. You know how you give somebody like laughing, like laughing gas and they just keep laughing. That's how it is with the Hebrew Israelites. Somebody gave them some type of sleepy gas that made them not preach the gospel. They talking about, let me teach you about your nationality and all that. So in discord, they like a cancer patient. Jesus was born in Palestine. That's the first time I heard that. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, a night of king. First Christians were Jewish people. Twelve apostles was Jews. And he came preaching to the Gentiles. So Isaiah 11 and 11. And there shall come forth a rod out of the steam of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Just Joshua says, all praise to the most high. The day comes when, where they will be at your feet. Serving you in fear. Topper says, Did it the Egyptian yesterday, then fled Moses at this saying, and was stranger in the land of Madi uh, Median, where he begat two sons, and when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wounded at the sight. And as he drew near to, to behold it, the voice of the Lord came to him. There, so Isaiah eleven eleven, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the healing, after the hearing of his ears. Somebody say, if Jesus owns Israel, it's holy land. Mr. Sparkle time. Amen. People wander in the desert trying to explain the world while being at a bronze age, age level state of technology. Topper is telling him about the Holy Land scripture. He's saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, put off thy shoes from. That's the scripture right there. Put off thy shoes from thy feet for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning and am come down to deliver them. You always hear them talking about Egyptian that they had dealing with Egypt and stuff like that. So you know that the Egyptian gods is what a lot of people try to teach you. And they say, well, Jesus life was stolen from the, um, the ancient Egyptians or. You get what I'm saying? But the ancient Egyptians never baptized nobody. They never talked about no Holy Ghost. They never said that all sins would be forgiven. They never spoke the way how Jesus spoke. So what are y'all talking about? They can't show no emerald tablet, no book that they talking about where they saying Jesus' life was stolen for it. I don't care what came before the Bible. Y'all are liars. Y'all can't show and prove that stuff with the scriptures, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Paul said that, and uh, that goes for the Hebrew, Israelite, Ethiopian, Hebrew church, Bible scholars, all y'all. Any one of y'all want to challenge me, I'll come to your, ch your church or your, your school with the Bible and we can go. Paul said that in Christ, there is no Jew or Gentile, rich or poor. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Yeah, it says it two times, a knight of king. It says, whether Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, you're all one in Christ Jesus. Then it says, whether Jew nor um, Greek, circumcised or uncircumcised, Scythian, barbarian. Um, but you are all one in Christ Jesus. All, everyone is one in Christ free Israel it says it a different way that way it words it a little differently but it says that two times Adrian says Christ is a secret a secret that has been revealed I, I don't know about a secret I know he's a a holy a righteous, he's a, they said he, his name would be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. So he's a righteous God. I know that. It's getting a little chilly up in here. It's 39 degrees today. It just looks sunny out, but. Ben said Ezekiel 23 and 20. I think we just went all through Ezekiel, right? Yeah, we read the whole Ezekiel 23. You probably just quoted the chapter at first without the verse, but I just gave it all. Thank you, though. Oh, oh, oh lie, Mary. Amen. Peace be unto you. We got Muslims out here trying to refute Christ's gospel. The Muslims know that 
it's too much of the Holy Spirit in this presence of this live stream. So they dare come in here trying to uh, come against scriptures and come in here and try to profess that Muhammad was um, doing the same thing as Jesus or anything about how Muhammad was a prophet the same way Jesus was. Or that Jesus is not a prophet or that it is, there is any other God besides Jesus. And he was there in the beginning. And we showing y'all when y'all think y'all praying to Muhammad, Y'all are actually praying, excuse me, praying to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is God. So when we show y'all that, it makes them have to automatically convert. They don't have to say it out their mouth, but once they hear these words, this is a, this is how prophecy works. Once you hear these words in your heart, you now are no longer a Muslim. You are a follower in the true and living God. Now, if you confess with your mouth and believe because you know the truth is in your heart now. This hits your soul and your heart, divine, the soul and spirit. It's a double-edged sword. Now, once you start to confess, because you heard the prophecy and it hit your heart, now you can be saved, because there's no other name which men will be saved under earth but Jesus Christ. So we're converting Muslims, making a heart become uncircumcised, circumcising a heart with the word of God. All glory be to, all glory be to God. Not just Muslims, Buddhists, monks, Catholics, whoever. Who is Elijah compared to you or not? Elijah was a prophet. We can be a prophet of God too if we follow God. It says you are the children of the prophets. A knight of kings says yes, Muhammad didn't fulfill any prophecies in the Quran or Sahia. Hadiths, even his very lifestyle went against God's will and his ways according to the Torah and NG, the Bible. Yeah, that's what I was explaining about Muhammad. His lifestyle, it went against what Jesus stood for, how he taught about everybody had one wife, how he told us how to pray, how he told us how to fast. Your God ref him, figures which ye made to worship them and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out, drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him in house, howbeit the most high dwelleth, not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Hallelujah. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which have shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now, of, of whom ye have been now, the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Read Stephen's speech also, I mean, in Acts chapter 7, Jews, Muslims of Islam repent. 
So this is for the, all the Jews and the Muslims of Islam to repent. Stephen's speech in Acts 7 is what we just talked about. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which shew before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Now, Muhammad claimed that he got this law from God from an angel and stuff like that. Have he kept it? How many wives did he have? How old was Aisha? We're blessed to keep it because we will receive eternal life. And as heirs of Christ, we will be kings and queens over the heavens. Who is a liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the antichrist, denying the father and the son. Yeah. I call myself a Christian. I know I'm a Christian, but I'm disobedient. You got to get in your word and Pray and fast more. It sounds like you need to pray and fast more and meditate in your word more. When people talk like that, that means they're not in their word. They're not praying as much as they need to be. So you got to get in your word. Audio Bible or read it. Do whatever is best for you, more comfortable. And pray and ask God to give you that spirit to be more obedient. And take all the unclean spirits that's in you that's making you disobedient. Take them out. It don't say disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. It say rebelliousness. So that's like the same thing, being disobedient and being rebellious. But it might have two different definitions. If you look at disobedient and you look at rebellious, you can be disobedient to something that's unrighteous, but just rebelliousness. It's just like, you just like all out, just do things your own way. Disobedient can mean like, I follow it when I want to. You get what I'm saying? I know it. I know what God say, but I, I have troubles, you know, so I only follow it when I, when, not when I want to, but, you know, when things are going good or however, however, whatever makes you obedient, you get what I'm saying? Like, but rebelliousness is, I know what God say, but I want to do things my way and I don't got to listen to God. That's rebelliousness. But disobedient means the opposite of obeying. So uh, you can't really make it seem what it's not. It's, it's, being, it's not obeying. That's what it is, being disobedient. But I wouldn't say somebody that disobedient is rebellious because that disobedient person could fast and pray and say, man, I know it's wrong and I'm being disobedient. That confession right there is going to bring them closer to being obedient. Somebody that's rebellious, I'm not never changing until I die. Get what I'm saying? I'm God. And y'all can't tell me I'm God. Being disobedient is, man, I know God told us we can't do this, but I, 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 I'm having trouble. You know what I'm saying? That's disobedient. Lord, have mercy on me. That's disobedient. I'm a sinner. Even the dude that was on the cross, he asked Jesus to have mercy on him, and he was forgiven. That's a deep lesson. That's a real teaching right there. So, but somebody that said, man, what type of Messiah are you? Come down from the cross and save yourself and save us. 
I'm God. See, you got one person. This this why I love you, Jason Mitchell. He said disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. Repent, but it's not truly all the time. Because that one dude, he was a sinner on the cross. He was disobedient. He said, I know I'm a sinner. Can you please have mercy on me and forgive me when you get into paradise in your kingdom? And Jesus forgave him. So that was disobedient. Now, the rebelliousness was he know Jesus is God. He know Jesus going about to be up sitting on the throne next to um, God, right? In heaven. But he going to say, man, what kind of Messiah are you? Come down from the cross and save yourself and save us. So he knew who Jesus was and what he would do because he kept prophesying and talking about it. So that's why the other dude that was on the cross already knew because he said, man, when you get into your kingdom, you get what I'm saying? But the other dude was sarcastic like the Pharisees who killed him. So that's a deep lesson to learn. Some people say good and evil. They say the angel and the devil, left shoulder, right shoulder. You get what I'm saying? They have them cartoons with the angel on one side, dressed in white, talking, saying, no, don't do it. But the devil is in pitchfork saying, yeah, go do it, go do it. That's how I look at when Jesus was on the cross. You had the spirit of disobedience, but he was still saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I believe, but I'm a sinner. Then you had the spirit of rebelliousness. Man, what type of Messiah are you? Come down from the cross and save yourself and save us. You think he made it in? Was that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, y'all think? It depends, like, uh, I don't know. Depends what, what, how we gonna look at that. But God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Isaiah 41.10. All right. We going into Isaiah 41 and 10, y'all. Y'all want to follow along? Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear them not. Fear them not. Fear thou not. Excuse me. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah. I will help thee. Yeah. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Cheryl, pray for my boyfriend. He is on drugs and sleeping around and mentally abusive to me. He makes me unhappy, but I have no money to leave him. I want him to learn a lesson that will get him close to God. Sometime, with stuff like that, you said your boyfriend. If it's your boyfriend, you can leave him. You said you have no money to leave him. So maybe you live with him. But you should have other family members or somebody that can help you until you can get your own place or something. But if he's mentally abusive to you then you should teach him about the word of God and try to pray with him now I can I can pray that Jesus come into his heart 
you know, the word of God and inspire him to want to live for God and stop living for the world. But you know him better than me. God knows his heart better than everybody. And he knows your heart. So if it's for you, if he's meant for you, then gotta keep you together with him and make y'all stronger and make you be able to get through this but if he's not gotta give you signs and give you strength to, to, to be delivered and, and walk away because it say deliver us from evil and don't lead us into temptation and you saying that he's mentally abusive so that's not good think you should just show him about God's word. You said you want to bring him closer to God. Next time you got time with him, write down some scriptures that you see about marriage or how a husband's supposed to treat his wife. And once you get them scriptures, then you can sit down and talk to him and say, do you believe in God? see where his heart is at because if he don't believe in God then you shouldn't be with him the Bible say if you love sister father, brother uh, wife more than me you're not worthy to be my disciple so test his heart see if he loved God write down all the scriptures that talk about marriages and how a husband is supposed to treat his wife. And if he don't believe in that, if he can't follow it, then that that's your rules and grounds to leave him. He's just your boyfriend. To make matters worse for Islam, the Quran says the NG and Torah are Allah's previous revelations, but it's, it also says that Allah's words cannot be altered or corrupted. Darren Il Fakari, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. He also said in John, I and the Father are one. Amen, Darren Il Fakari. That's true. Somebody got uh some <clears throat> speaking in tongues in here. Jesus Ghana Il possesses Israel for those who speak Spanish. Jesus Ghana Il possesses Israel, Israel for those who speak Spanish. I think we got some Russian typing in here too. It looked like Russian Akram Soyarov. All right, a knight of the king says, we know Christ is God too, because he tells his apostles, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. Christ claims he is the father. While Isaiah chapter nine, verse six through seven says, Christ is the father. Yeah. So when Christ told his apostles, if you have seen me, you have seen the father also. He was telling them, if you see me, you seen God. Jesus himself telling the apostles, if you see me, you seen the Father. Now he said Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 
says Christ is the Father. I want to jump into Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So we're talking about a child being born, and we're talking about someone's son. We got that clear. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. So the whole government shall be upon his shoulder. Remember, we just learned that when Pontius Pilate, when, when Caiaphas, he's... Pontius Pilate said, I'm innocent of the blood of this of this um, innocent man. He said, I'm clean. My hands are clean. Remember? And then Caiaphas, he 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 gave up the office of the priest. He wasn't supposed to rip his clothes. Remember when he did that? He 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 gave up the office. We read about that earlier. This made Jesus the the, the the high priest and this birth this talks about the birth of the prince of peace so all of this stuff happened particular for a reason so pro all these prophecies could be fulfilled if you don't have a mind of christ you can't read these scriptures like this and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called this is what his name will be so we know God's name is God, right? Because in Genesis, it tells us in the beginning, God created and he said, this is my name. I am I am God, right? I'm the Lord. All right. So it says that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Stop right there. His name shall be called the Mighty God. Who in the in the word of God name was called? God nobody else right who name was called the only begotten son of God my only begotten son Jesus so right here Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 it says his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God now these are three different names it's not all one name they have commas after every name. Wonderful, first name, counselor, second name, the mighty God, third name, the everlasting father. When y'all hear this, y'all probably think this is all one name. It's not. The everlasting father, fourth name, and the prince of peace is his fifth name. Jesus, they called him Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. So when you take all of these scriptures, I and my father are one. You put before Abraham was I am. God told Moses, tell him I am sent you. Jesus said before Abraham was I am. So when you take all these scriptures and you put them into context, you'll see. It says of the increase, David called him Lord, right? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David. David called him Lord upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this y'all keep playing with my master like this is a game like i'm not coming and showing and proving everything what we saying y'all are unstable and unlearned you err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. I'm showing you where the power and the truth is. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory
they said Jesus gave the disciples power. Right? To become the son. To be, um, to heal the sick, cast out devils, miracle signs and wonders. Bible don't never talk about no energy or no vibrations. It's a power or no electricity or this. Y'all are mixing new age teachings and spirituality teachings, third eye teachings and stuff with the word of God. Y'all got to stop doing that. Check the vibes and all that. Some of y'all still believing in the rapture. We know that that's not biblical. The rapture, it ain't nowhere in the Bible. They ain't never say nothing about no rapture coming. What's the context? The Bible is clear that Christ is God. He is the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son slash Word of God. Thank you, a knight of king. Bible is older than the USA. Yeah, Jason Mitchell. The Muslims be trying to come with a doctrine that was written in the 1900 talking about they the black Jews because they had a temple out in Harlem and stuff like that. Man, them brothers probably was eating pork and all that. I don't know what they was doing, but I'm just saying, like, just because people got a temple and call themselves Jews don't mean that Y'all are keeping the whole law. That's what I'm saying. Good to you. They was not doing no burnt offerings and sacrificing no he goats and giving turtle doves up for offerings. They wasn't doing all that, brothers and sisters. Trust me. I know the law. You can't you can't be deceived once you know the word. That's the beautiful thing about God's word. You can only be edified. They said, do men light a candle and put it under a bed or put it on a candlestick and give it light to everyone that in the house? No, the, the, the apostle told Jesus, show us the father, meaning they wanted to see how God looked like. Christ then told him, I've been here in front of you the whole time. Yeah. Thank you for explaining it a little more clear for them, a knight of the king. So the apostles told Jesus, show us the father. They wanted to see how does God look? You get what I'm saying? Because he kept teaching them about the father the whole time. So he responded and said, I've been here in front of you the whole time. Yeah, the Trinity is a lie, Jason. I have to say Jesus is not the Father from the mouth of a saved Christian. Ask me how I know. Adrian, we are showing you scriptures and you're leaning on your own understanding. God said lean not on your own understanding. He said in all our ways trust in the Lord and he shall direct our paths. Say man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It say... There's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? So now can you answer with scriptures, brother? We love you. Hey, wait, not yet, but don't speak on things that you don't know of or you have not seen. But if I do sin up on this live, y'all forgive me. I would be decent and orderly to not let no one. My hide, I hide my sins like Jesus said. Blessed are the men who sins. Let me look for these scriptures real quick because I got the laptop right here. Let me go on this one.
Oh, let me see if we can get back on um, Wi-Fi, actually. It's trying to load up and get Wi-Fi. There we go. All right, Psalms 32, verse 1 through 11. Psalms 32, verse 1 through 11. You know how some of y'all, you could close your eyes and dial people number on your phone if you got like a specific type of phone or whatever. That's how I know the Bible. Psalms 32, verse 1 through 11. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed, imputed not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Salah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in the time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Salah. That's why I always tell y'all worship music is important. If you're feeling down, besides praying, fasting, and reading the word, worship music. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine hands. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and brittle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. See? God care about your heart. And this is telling us that in Psalms 32, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Now, we know that Jesus came and died for the world sin. So we say, Lord, have mercy on us. And it's that it's just that simple. And then when we go in the secret and we pray in private to God, it's even better. You get what I'm saying? Because we could talk to him how you talk to your best friend on the phone. And he answers us. You got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's your father. Having a spiritual father, it means a lot. Because, like, you will have an earthly father, and he might tell you, like, he might be going through a divorce in, li in life with his wife. So he might tell you, I can't help you financially, but I can help you mentally. Like, if you need any advice, ask me anything. But it might be certain things he might not know about the word of God. You get what I'm saying? He might not have an understanding on certain things that God might reveal to you. So your father might forsake you in certain ways, but Jesus Christ ain't going to forsake you in these ways. Like when you go into certain things, your father might not know how to handle certain things. He might not have certain knowledge and wisdom, but your spiritual father, Jesus Christ got all knowledge, all wisdom. So He's going to give you the same spirit that he has in him. And you will know all things. He's going to teach you all things.
Sandy, how can you say Jesus is not the father? He just did his father's will perfectly so that his father can be seen through Jesus' deeds. So you telling me that you don't believe in the Bible then? Because Jesus said, I and my father are one. He said, before Abraham was, I am. So if Jesus is not the father, they asked him to show him God. They said, you just seen him. He said, I'm, I'm with you. You're talking with him right now. So how are you going to say he's not the father when we're sitting up here showing with the scriptures and proving you must don't believe in the Bible? So uh, you don't believe in the word of God, Sandy? Yes. Thank you, a knight, of, a knight of the King says, yes, because Christ is part of the triune Godhead. When he was saying that, he was speaking from the position of a humble servant, as Philippians explained. All right, so he says, read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. It, explain, it, it says clearly that Christ is the everlasting Father. Yeah. So when it says he's the everlasting Father, we know God don't die, do he? God lives forever, right? So in Isaiah chapter 9, when they said unto us, a son is born. This is a, a, a man with, with flesh like me and you. A child is given. This is a baby that people picked up and held. And, and his name was called the everlasting father. You get what I'm saying? I don't think y'all understand how powerful these teachings are for your salvation of your soul you shouldn't play with this you should be reading everything we're telling you and quoting and seeing what we're saying is true and seeing god is true and no man no no man of god is a liar if he's speaking the words of god and showing you in the scriptures and proving what we're saying god is true every man is a liar but a man of god is not going to speak a lie because we, we ain't speaking our own words. Man don't live by bread alone. Jackie Moon Pie. One day your life will, will flash before your eyes. So make sure it's worth watching. Every day our life flashing before our eyes. <laughs> Once you teach them the truth, they say, he's the everlasting father, but his name is Yahweh. His name is the everlasting father. Y'all say it wasn't no J in the Hebrew alphabet, but father ain't no J, is it? It's an F. So y'all can't say nothing about that, see? His name should be called the mighty God. So... We don't have to keep calling him Jesus. We can call him the mighty God, but we know his name was Jesus Christ. But he was God. Like prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. So y'all keep trying to argue over something that has no biblical standing. His name wasn't just called Jesus. Why are you saying his name is Jesus? Is so what, 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 what is his name for father in Hebrew? What is his name for God in Hebrew? Y'all say, y'all say the names of what y'all want to teach. Stop trying to cause distraction. And y'all, that's so in discord if you ask me. Because it caused division. Nobody, Jesus never told y'all to go back and preach in Hebrew. He said, go into the, all the nations preaching the gospel. He never told them to preach only in Hebrew. Little brother, don't fall for the distraction. You don't have to respond to some of the nonsense. Are you responding? Move on from that. Continue to allow God to us, you. God bless. Thank you, Aubrey Hammock. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Focus hard to not res respond to comments that's not really biblical. Don't really have no scriptures.
I only want comments with scriptures. You said the Holy Trinity is the three forms of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I can be and probably is all forms of That's right, a knight, a knight of the king. This brother, knight of the king, is on point. He said, Yahweh is Christ. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, which is the name God gave Moses in Exodus. God told him, tell him, I am sent you. That's what God told Moses. He said, I am. He said, tell him, I am sent you. See, y'all don't want to play with these scriptures because we get real technical with these open heart biblical surgeries we give y'all. The word of God is a double-edged sword. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through 14, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Let's get this from the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 through 14. For the word of God is quick and powerful no it got electricity no it it, it it um it's uh what they say y'all energy it's energy it don't say that brother and sister they say for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and <laughs> end of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart y'all got to stop mixing this new age stuff with the word of god it's a power all up and throughout this word it's a for the word of god is quick and powerful it don't say energy get what i'm saying it got vibrations it, for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of heart. So how you think and your intentions of your heart will be shown with this word of God. It's quick, it's powerful. Soon as it hits you, it make you wanna react. You get convicted, that's how quick it is. And it's powerful because it makes every knee and every tongue bow and confess. Because you can either be a son of God or a child of the devil. Jesus told them Pharisees, ye are of your father the devil. He told them Hebrew Israelites, you are of your father, the devil. He told them we ain't even the same family. He Look, he knew they was Hebrew Israelites, but this is what he told them. This is deep right here, brothers and sisters. I wish I could start, Lord willing, having these ideas when I come up with my shorts because these are like, they always try to put this teaching out like, yeah, Jesus was a Hebrew Israelite. He had our blood, he was black. Man, go read John chapter 8, verse 44. Go read John chapter 8, verse 44 real quick. Let's see how, let's see what Jesus said himself. Ye are of your father the devil. Who did he say this to? The Jews. 
they said we'd be Abraham's seed. What he tell them? So these are people that was born of his same bloodline, his same family. He told them, ye are of your father the devil. He ain't say we all Hebrew Israelites. See? Y'all keep playing around with this word of God. Y'all be put to shame every time I come up here. Lord willing. I'm not going to play with y'all because Christ ain't play with y'all. He told them, he ain't say we all Israelites, we come from Jerusalem. He said, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye believe? Why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered who? Then answered the Jews. No, they were Gentiles. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not, well, that thou art a Samarian and haste the devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. You see? He telling the Jews this. He didn't say we all Israelites, so, you know, we got the same blood. Let me teach y'all about y'all nationality. Y'all know I'm Solomon's great nephew and stuff. He ain't say none of that. See? It's going to get dangerous every time I come up on these lives, because y'all going to get put to shame in Jesus name trying to make my master look like he was weak and taught that division so in discord he had to go out and teach nations he wasn't just sent to the tribes of Israel that's one scripture y'all take out of context y'all don't know what that scripture mean y'all rest at that scripture like y'all do all the other ones to your own destruction cause y'all have the spirit of error in y'all and I got an ought against y'all because y'all err not knowing scriptures can no Hebrew Israelite get up in my face talking about yeah brother let me teach you about the Old Testament you don't know what it means you don't know what Christ came for you make it look like he died in vain y'all talking about all Hebrew Israelites ain't the same well why y'all ain't all on the same accord if it's ones that's different why y'all teaching a different gospel why y'all making things look like Christ taught ways that he didn't teach? I'm teaching the same way Jesus taught in the temple every day. He said, tear down this built temple. I build up a new one in three days. They thought he was talking about the temple building. He was talking about the temple of his body. That's the same temple I'm, I'm talking about. Spiritual. I could fit I could fit the words of God in the souls of more people than the building can ever fit. Think about that. See, this word is beautiful, man. It's marvelous because you got I can't get all these people from all these countries that come into America, but the, the word of God will bring them. He said, you lift up my name, I, bring, I draw all men to you. That prophecy been fulfilled with these YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all forms of social media made that prophecy become fulfilled for people who used these platforms to preach the good news. This is why a lot of us people feel like we shouldn't deal with politics because this gospel is good enough. You don't have to put no whipped cream on the Bible. Like, when I talked to my sister, this friend, this sister I know down in Atlanta, when I told her about the prosperity preacher, I rebuked how that pastor called me. And then I said, well, she knew his name when I told her that he had, um, somebody said that he was, he, he was spitting on people's face and stuff like that. And trying to do like a, 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 a like a, make an example or show like how Jesus spit on somebody's face and they the blind man and he became, but they said that he was spitting on people's face and he did it a lot. And 
you know, she was like, man, you don't need to do all that. Just preach the gospel. The gospel is enough. That's extra stuff. And I didn't know that he was doing all that stuff when the, when I talked to the pastor. So if you get mad at me for coming out publicly saying this, brother, I can't do nothing against the truth, only for the truth. Now it's either that's a lie or they got videos of him doing this. She knew who exactly who he was and told me more stuff. I don't think she making this up, brother. She a Christian. She be in church and all that, brother. So I don't think she making it up. Like she just went to a Bible museum and all that. Took her mom with her. So, so she like serious. She been a Christian longer than me. Said she been a Christian like five years or something. So that's all we need is just to preach. We don't need to do all this other stuff to try to show scriptures and show examples and stuff. You got certain preachers opening up their jacket and people falling out, acting like that's fake, that's magic, that's witchcraft. And y'all think that bring more members to your church. So they make it go viral on the internet and they say, wow, what church that happened in? I wanna go there and see if he do it again. So that's what it's starting to become. It's starting to become more about what the pastor going to do instead of how, how how rightly he going to divide the word. Yes, but it's three, but it's three. It, it's not no three forms that make no one Jesus, brother. See, when you when you type some comments, sometimes you gotta quote scriptures so we can read it and see what you're saying. Cause it just look like 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 you see how the knight of the king post scripture, Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. I'm gonna show his comment that he said. He said, Yes, but it's but it's his three forms that make one Jesus. That make one. It's his three forms that make one. Jesus is the Son of God. It's the same Lord, but I'm a different precise. See? What what we don't know what scripture you referencing that to. But Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 also says that Christ is the everlasting Father. He is the Father, not just the Son alone. Y'all gotta take that into consideration. So she, the last comment that we read for Miss Mr. Sprinkle Time is still up pinned up there. He says that yes, but it's his three forms that make one Jesus is the Son of God. He said Jesus is the Son of God. Isaiah chapter nine verse six says he's the everlasting Father. It says he's the mighty God. It didn't even call him a son, did it? It said a son will be born. For unto us a son is born, a child is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. It didn't say the Son of God. It said the Mighty God. Then it said the Everlasting Father. Now, he called himself the Son of God, yes, but we take in the whole biblical book in the context. It's a whole book of prophecy. We can't just take New Testament and say, well, none of the stuff that was prophesied in the Old Testament about him matters. No, it all has to go together. When he say before Abraham was I am, how do we know about I am before until, unless we know that God told Moses to tell him that I am sent you? We have to get take Old Testament too. Them nations of gods and earth is in trouble. They in trouble. I got sound doctrine, brothers and sisters. Tell one of them nation gods and earth, come challenge me. I dare one of y'all. I would use this Bible to take Clarence X out the water with these teachings. Y'all don't want to test me. None of them nations of gods and earth don't got knowledge that could outdate the Bible. Y'all doctrine is from 100 years ago. How you God 
and you ain't even know about God before your, your, your leader was born. And how y'all God calling another man father? God ain't got no father. I just told you Jesus Christ is the everlasting father, prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So how are you going to call yourself God? He said he's the mighty God. That's why they start saying, well, I'm the God of myself, and you can't tell me I'm not. <laughs> yeah, all right. He was called son because he came in the flesh, but it wasn't, but it was the father operating body. Another day, another win, another victory. All glory be to God. How are you? Where are you from? W Palm, I'm good. I'm from America, up, up in New York, America. So United States of America and New York State. Exactly, Jason, well done. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times thou shalt keep them O lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever yeah we got a holy and righteous god and his words are pure his judgments are righteous perfect god is moving the king is about to rise peter h amen The reason Christ is called a son is because he was in the flesh. So he came in the flesh. He called himself the son of God. But before he was in the flesh, they called him the everlasting father. They called him the mighty God. That's what they said his name will be called. So Thomas called him my Lord and my God. He never called himself. He, he said before Abraham was I am. He spoke in parables to people. The reason why he did that is he said, because seeing they see not and hearing they hear not and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah the prophet. So that's why he spoke to them Pharisees and them high priests and all them rulers that way. He said, are thou the king of the Jews? He said, thou sayest it. They said, man, if you be the Christ, tell us plainly. Remember when he got interrogated, he ain't say them a word. He ain't answered them a word, remember? He knew prophecy was going to be fulfilled. He ain't say, man, Judas, you're going to betray me with a kiss. I'm going to get the disciples to do something to you. Nope. He let it all happen. Because he was a prophet and more than a prophet. So he knew all these things. He was slain since before the beginning of time. John chapter 12, verse 28 through 30. Let me see. John chapter 12, verse 28 through 30. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. See?
Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he would die. He knew how he would die. He didn't stop Judas from betraying him. They know Jesus was there in the beginning. Can you please read John 1? All right, hold on. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So it's telling us in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then it say, that same word was made flesh and dwelt among men. We read all this stuff in John chapter one. Let's start at verse, let's, let's, let's start at verse 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so we're letting us know right here that the word was made flesh so that same word that was made flesh was kept by jesus christ it wasn't kept by none of the prophets of the old time Remember, the priests had to give sin offerings for themselves and for the people. So the priests didn't even keep the law. They was doing sins. You heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. For your sakes. A hey, Glockina, that's the first time you got to comment to leave like that. Next time you're going on timeout. The more bolder you get, the more bolder I get with the uh, judgments. I don't want to put you, block you from the channel. I'd rather just put you on timeout, whether it be for 20, 30 minutes or 24 hours. And then you should think about being more respectful. We all in here speaking about God and learning and teaching each other, exhorting one another and edifying each other. So we posting scriptures from the Holy Bible, the King James Version. If you want to add on, you can add on. But the word of God says, if anybody add or take away from these words. So when you call people names like like that, God look for the most broken people. So he can come into their heart and change them. He ain't looking at what you've been through or what you're going through. This is why he said, like the world give you. And that's why he said, I pray not for this world. I pray for those that are mine. And he told all his disciples and all his followers to love, love one another.
I know these teachings might be hard to understand when you're just coming out of reading that stuff about the Egyptian gods and all that stuff some of y'all probably believe in. But this word is the bread of life. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist. Who is this he that we talking about? And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Oh, so it's not no spirit. We talking about the flesh from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. So we're not talking about God, the spirit. We're talking about God, of flesh, who is Jesus Christ. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. See, this is the most popular topic on the planet right now. All glory be to God. Them record labels get gonna have to start talking about God after this. Somebody gonna have to do some changing. Somebody gonna have to repent. Every time we come up here, we searching for souls. God is a Holy Spirit and God got in flesh and his name is Jesus. Amen, Jason Mitchell. A Knight of the King says, yet simultaneously, all three had the same nature. Same desire, same will, same thoughts, and same emotions. Just because Christ has his own will doesn't mean he doesn't have the same will as the Father. Yeah. One God, one spirit, one son. Yeah. But Jesus was still in heaven. He wasn't created. He's not the Father, but the Son. Yet, you just read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and you saying that it don't say that. His, his, his name will be called the everlasting father. That wasn't even him or none of his disciples saying that. That's Moses' disciples saying that. Isaiah said that. The prophets of old time. So I don't I don't get what you did. Like Hebrew Israelites will agree with these teachings. So I don't get who would come against this. They will only say, yeah, but his name is Yahashua. The only thing they could say. They can't say this ain't, ain't facts. God, God is a spirit, Trayvon Phillips. You put good as a spirit. That makes sense too. There's none good but God. Jesus said, if I don't do the will of the Father, then don't believe me. John chapter 10, verse 37. John chapter 10, verse 37. It say, if I do not. Look, let's go start at 34. John chapter 10, start at 34, y'all. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the son of God. 
If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe me not, but the, look, but if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. What happened after this, brothers and sisters? Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. See, they wanted to take him again after this because he said, my father, his word ain't got no, uh, you don't have his word in you. Watch this. John, John chapter 14 and verse 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hears not mine, but the father's which sent me. Wow. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So when he was teaching them all these teachings about fasting and prayer and all this stuff, this wasn't his word. It's the Father's word. See, he said, "It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves." When he ran up in the temple, they were selling doves. Now you got to take your mind and wrap around this. These are the high priests and people that taught the law. They took the tithes and offerings and all this stuff. Churches was just being built. This is in Matthew chapter 21, verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written. They wasn't Gentiles. They was up in the temple, not a church, brothers and sisters. My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. They was in there sinning. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he held them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. He, he look, he called them hypocrites. He said this where he told them about them. Them little tithes and offerings. The scribes and Pharisees, Matthew 23, go in the, um, start at verse 20. No, start at verse 22. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint, and anise and coming and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone ye blind guides ye ye, ye blind guides which strain at a net and swallow a camel woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye made clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Look, y'all make the temple look all clean, but inside y'all in here selling turtle doves and stuff like that. He was mad. See, this ain't no game. Y'all sitting up here playing with my master. He got angry in the spirit. He didn't get angry in the flesh and sin. His soul.
Yeah, they call themselves five percenters, but they um they call themselves God. What they call another man father. Show me in the Bible where God said he had a father. Jesus said, I and my father are one. So we know we ain't talking about the same God from the Bible. That's a false God that Clarence 13th X was talking about when he told y'all y'all was God. I don't know why he told y'all the capital G God like you created. You a creator. Y'all don't create nothing. He ain't even create that flag that he had that seven on. He got that flag from a store, from a bodega or something like that, and drew that up. He ain't create that. The fabric on that flag? He had to go to Walmart or somewhere, not Walmart, but whatever was the popular store, and get um crayons and colors to draw that coloring, to make it yellow and black on that seven on that flag but god create things out of the he, he created the grass you can read genesis you get what i'm saying you doing craftiness artwork calling it a creation man y'all got a creation date and y'all got an expiration date when you die it's no more gods in earth for you only staying alive by the spirit of the Antichrist to keep that alive. Then we learn about all this. It says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So who are you to think you are God? You ain't creating no heaven and no earth. You can't make it rain. That's just, just easy teaching. This is why the Bible said Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman. Yes, let us make man. God was speaking to himself. Yeah, yeah, chew it in each head. He couldn't be speaking to angels because the angels cannot create. They're not God. Yeah, good point, a knight of the king. God was speaking to himself. Hello, Maddie Shannon. Peace be unto you. Thank you for joining. Y'all can hit the like button. We got 105 people, 106 people in the chat. It's looking like it's only 15 likes. We glorifying God's name up in here. God was alone in the beginning, self-existing. No one was there with him, only one God, and God is a spirit, a Holy Spirit. And this one God created, this one God created all things. Yep, Jason Mitchell. Oh. All right, so Yeah, we got Colossians 1 and 17. You got Matthew 24 and 36, Adrian. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. So that's talking about how God knows the day and hour. when the son of man will come. God bless you, Antoine. Peace be unto you. Yo, you keep talking about stuff that's not about the topic of this channel. 
put you in time out, bro, for 10 minutes. Next time might be 24 hours, bro, because we speaking about the word of God. Will a man rob God? Malachi 3 and 8. Yeah. So when they said tithes, you know that Jesus just rebuked them and said, you pay tithes of um, um, herbs, mint, anise. He said, you 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 forget the, the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and judgment. So Matt, Malachi chapter three, verse eight. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So they take this scripture and try to use it like it applies in a, for churches. This don't apply for no churches. Bring all your tithes into a storehouse and all that. And then it say that there may be meat in mine house. So meat means meals and food and stuff like that. Tides was given herbs. Now, if you had a farm and you had, you know, like he goats and oxen and turtle doves, you would give that as tides. So they don't even know what tides and offerings is. And then the offerings will be when they burn these animals and stuff like that, they don't even really be knowing what the tithes and offerings is. Stop playing with me. You're giving 10% of your animals. Offerings is when you offer up animals to be burnt, right? See? So when y'all take this, will a man rob God? Yeah, and tithes and offering. Y'all don't know what that scripture means, especially you saying it in the church. How can Christ not be God when Colossians 117 by him all things consist? Yeah, exactly. They don't understand these scriptures, brother. They rest to their own destruction. Yeah, they rest on these scriptures to their own destruction. real second timothy 2 and 23 hold up but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender stripes so foolish and unlearned questions i'm about to start avoiding Yes, because Christ is the God of the Old Testament. That's right. Every time they talking about the Lord of hosts, they talking about Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord and not the angel of the Lord, the Lord of hosts. No, the angel of the Lord. That's talking about Jesus Christ. You got to I'm going to do another teaching about that and then break it down because they mentioned the angel of the Lord maybe over a thousand times. And I think it's even in New Testament. And yeah, that's a whole different teaching. Adrian said, the night of the king, Matthew 24, 36. I don't know what that supposed to mean. We, we about to get to it right now. Give me one second. Matthew 24 and 36. But of that day, yeah, we just read that, brother. It say, but if my phone got 18%, y'all. But I'm going to try to stay on as live as possible. 
I'm just giving y'all the warning right now. We only got 18%. John 1846. I got you right now. Crickets 45. Hold on. John 1846. There's no John 1846, brother. Yeah, there's no John 1846. But since you got me here, I will read John 19 and 18. No, actually, I'm going to start at John 19 and 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth in, into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him. On either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a letter and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh unto the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. No, it just was written in Hebrew, brothers. And it was written in Hebrew, in Greek, and Latin. No, Jesus was an Israelite, so everybody had to spell the Hebrew language. And it was written in Hebrew, in Greek, and Latin. If they wanted us to learn Hebrew, they would have never translated the Bible to English. They would have only put it in Hebrew, Greek and Latin. That's how it was written on the cross. They wanted us to have this for all nations. Chinese people know about Jesus. They can have, they got Bibles written in China. They got Chinese preachers and stuff like that. Chinese people have churches, brothers and sisters. Not all Chinese and Asians believe in Buddha. Some of them believe in Jesus. A lot of them. Um, you got John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Ain't that that, brother? I think that's that. Let's see. Let's, t let's, let's test and see if my spirit is right. John chapter 3, verse 16. For, for God, yeah, my spirit is right. I wanted to see if my spirit was defiled, brothers and sisters. I want to see if my temple was defiled. It say. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Y'all know what that means, right? You never die. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 Let no corrupt communication Proceed out of your mouth But that which is good To the use of edifying That it may minister grace Unto the hearers Rosebud may peace be upon you sis Good to see you in here Good morning and God bless you Nancy Rentes Mr. Sprinkle Time, good morning. Your icon looked like somebody else's, so 
It took me a while. You, you found now Raya Renee. All glory be to God. Read Jeremiah 44, 19. All right, we about to read Jeremiah 44, 19. Jeremiah 44.19 Hold up. Alright, so Jeremiah 44.19 And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? So, who is the queen of heaven? This was talking about the idolatry of Judah. This was talking about idolatry of Judah. So why did Muhammad put it in the Quran that Mary was the queen of heaven? Huh? Did Muhammad say Mary was the queen of heaven? Why well, don't no Muslim want to test me on this? When I say these things that Muhammad did that y'all know is probably in y'all Quran, y'all don't want to speak on it. But I don't study that stuff, so I would need somebody that know it to say, yeah, he said it right here. And the Lord says, speak my truths, but do so only in wagons, carts. What? You know, it make no sense, man. You're going on time out, bro. I like Israel or Palestine. Uh, yeah, I love everybody. I don't like the wars, but Yeah, Topper, that is true that disbelief leads to the contemporal contemporization of God's ways and nature. It comes from philosophy. It's the pride of the mind, a man's attempt to define what God is. Yep. says but about that hour but about that day or hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father yeah no one knows the days or the hour or the time that Jesus is coming back only the angels in heaven and only the father so this is why we have to be diligent in our word and meditate in our word because the word is going to teach you and show you the signs of things that was mentioned in the word. It's a book of prophecy. I showed y'all many different things that you have the spirit of Antichrist already here. We see many Antichrist spirits, many people that blaspheme Jesus Christ's name deliberately 
exalt themselves higher than the knowledge of God. We heard of wars, rumors of wars, the Euphrates rivers. Didn't that dry up or something like that? If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hates seeing, how can he love God whom he hates not seeing? Yeah. How can you love God but hate your brother? The reason Christ is called the Son is because of his flesh. But God's true form is eternal, his form as the Father. He was called, well, he was called in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, but he was called the Son of God. But they called him God before that. So, he was God, brothers and sisters. Bananas are not original bananas, modified. How you know? They say organic, they taste organic. They, when you go in the grocery store, they have the organic bananas in one spot. And then they have the regular bananas just laid out. All uh, you'll see usually more of the regular bananas. The organic bananas you'll see them in the organic section. The same with the lemons. You'll go in there and see organic lemons, and it, it won't be a lot of them. But then you go into the lemon section, and you'll usually see a lot, or you'll see bags of lemons. Bananas only come in bunches, so. They don't taste like, I don't, I, I don't know how to explain it. It tastes good. Philippians explains he was in the flesh, but now Christ is in heaven, so he knows the time. It's pointless because Christ has God's power, and I have Christ's power, so you can guess what that means. Hebrews 1 and 16. Let me see what that says real quick before I run in here. Y'all keep giving me scriptures that's not in here. There ain't no such thing as Hebrews 1 and 16. But y'all can go check out the uh, Jesus Christ is God t-shirts on my link. I have the Jesus Christ is God t-shirts up on my link. 
and they only gonna be up there for a limited time. I'm gonna have some shirts coming soon, Lord willing. Better with just like a biblical word like repent, forgiveness, stuff like that. So just say it for what it is, Christ. Yeah, they tried to say Christ was blaspheming when he said he could forgive sins because they said God can only forgive sins. Who is this man saying that he can come and just forgive everybody's sins? P. Rodriguez, God bless you, brother. May peace be upon you. you use that verse if Christ is not God if Christ is not God then how can he cover everyone's sins how can he be holy exactly. please read John 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God the word became flesh that's John 1 and 1, right? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yep. Genesis 1, chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Chilly up there. Ooh. Okay, um, please read John one and one. Hold on. We read John 1 and 1, y'all. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God gave him power to forgive sins and to even awaken people from death. The Holy Spirit came upon him in form of a dove after he got baptized. Yeah. So, Jesus Christ came and he started building churches. You never heard of nobody building a church. They never even knew what a church was. You get what I'm saying? They don't know what that word mean. He said all these thousands of people were added to the church. You get what I'm saying? So he's building something that's different. You get what I'm saying? He's giving them different teachings. He's giving them the law. So they couldn't understand and figure this dude out. He's 12 years old teaching in the temple at 12 years old, brothers and sisters. You get what I'm saying? And then he 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 come back when he was like 30 years old. He he like disappeared and stuff. So his life was like we don't even think about this and talk about it cuz it's it don't mention too much about it, but He was like 12 
12 years old, teaching in the temple. They want to have the 12 year olds now playing video games. Playing Black Ops. Ain't that what they doing? Playing NBA NBA games. Race cars or whatever, right? So it's always a, a blessing to see a, the child, the youth, the children into the Word of God. They are I, I like... That's a leader, that's a leading spirit right there. To like be into the word of God, preaching it. It's not going to this P.O. box, but I keep getting bills and they're not coming, so I got to figure something out. Niece, peace be unto you. Giving Jesus his rightful glory, so I'll withdraw because we're splitting hairs. is in the Bible. It's a lot of things in the Bible, brother. They tell you to let the locks of your hair grow in the Bible. In Numbers, Numbers chapter 6, verse 5, say he shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Now you see, this is wet oil. How my car is dripping. Because I'll be having the car running when I'm on live and stuff like that. That's not dry, that's wet. find a spot to be recording soon I don't have to keep making videos in the car record and charge my phone I'll be straight Samuel, right before Abraham was, I am John 8 and 58. 
Yep. And don't forget to check out the t-shirts if you want to support the channel and what I'm doing. I got the t-shirts for sale. It says, before Abraham was, I am Jesus Christ is God. I am my father of one. That's up. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. I got you right now, Rosebud. Hold up. I might as well make this video like a little five hour video and then end it from there. I didn't expect to go so long. But in my heart, I really just wanted to do the teaching and end it and then come back again and answer questions like I did yesterday. But I think I'm, I'm more people are coming to watch it if I just stay live longer. I'm noticing that. So I just have to suffer a little. Stay live longer. All right. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. See? That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. See, they were saying glory in the church. They wasn't talking about no temples and stuff. Jesus was teaching in the temples, but he built churches. See? So we learn a lot about when, um, how he came, what he did, why he changed the law, what, how he built a whole new um, body of people that was grafted into God's covenant and the promise that was given to Abraham. From the beginning. So he was a Hebrew Israelite, but he was out the tribe of Judah, but was a high priest. So they didn't they knew all of this stuff, but they didn't know it was gonna be him. Who here is the body of Christ? Let's be of one mind. Amen. The same accord should be that Christ is God incarnated because that's what John chapter 1 says yeah the word is God and God is the word John chapter 1 we can go there again in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God now let's just go on John chapter 1 and go to verse 14 so we know that the word was God and we know that God is a spirit, and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the word was made flesh. So now we're talking about a, a flesh and blood now. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See? Then to tell us he was in the world and the world was made by him. So we're not talking about a spirit no more if it's saying him. We're talking about flesh and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. We're not talking about the spirit God when we're saying this is 
and but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name and what's that name that name is Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace that's the name In the beginning was the word. That's why we go back to the beginning. That's why I went back to Isaiah. Then we go back to Genesis. In the beginning was the word. In creation, Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. See? Keep doing what you're doing, bro. This is how we all want to learn and know the truth. If only we humble ourselves before him. Peace, boy. Amen. Mio, hi bro, I hope you have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Rosebud says Proverbs 15 and 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place keeping watch on the evil and the good. Yeah, God watching evil and the good. His son said his son shine on the evil and the good, but you're going to know all men by their works. And every tree that don't bring forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Um, Psalms 56.10. Psalms 56.10 In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. Omina. Oh, hey, what's up? Come back to the other channel. My other channel, I got one, I got two more other channels. One of them is, that's not biblical. Let me give you Bible. So, no, he's not created being, only he is flesh is. Said Jehovah Witness contradict Hebrew one, making it a cult. Um, all of them probably don't believe in that stuff, but I don't know what they do. So, but I did hear that like the leader that created the Jehovah Witness was like a Freemason or something like that. I don't know. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Yup. Colossians chapter 1 16 even tells us Christ created the angels, principalities, powers, etc. Yeah, all things were created by him and for him. So he cannot be an angel like Jehovah Witnesses teach. It's a heresy. 
Christ is the word. Sammy Ra, amen. The way, the truth, and the life. He said, amen, night. I know y'all seeing each other's chat, but I'm looking for the good chats that I see. Anybody got any scriptures or questions? Alberto Garcia. Peace be upon you, brother. In Jesus' name. Naham Hilo, made in the image of God. Everyone pull out your Bibles and read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, preferably King James Version. So let's go on to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. to see what page second Timothy start on. Chapter two verse fifteen. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygillus and Hermo, Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. All right, so Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15. I'm sorry, y'all read the wrong scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. It's Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you do not study and meditate on the word of God, you will be prone to false doctrines and heresies. You, you'll be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You'll be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You'll have a, a witch or a wizard trying to teach you about the Bible telling you there's three different persons in the Godhead the rapture is coming back they are gonna tell you Jesus was a Catholic John was a Baptist they are gonna be telling you all different type of doctrines make you join the denomination not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers just give me I don't know what you talking about Sheena Rogers don't be one of the sheep that stray strays away from Christ's truth and into the traps of a cult like Jehovah Witness, LDs, and Islam. Yeah, man, I already been deceived by Islam, so 
I'll never go back into that. That's one of the things that hurt me when I was talking to this sister. I had met her, and she, she, me and her don't see Christ the same way. We had certain disagreements. And she was like, man, you should go back to Islam. <laughs> so I was like, wow. Well, and she apologized about it, though, but she was, like, mad at me for certain things. I don't know. But she called me last night or two days ago. You want to read the Bible together? I'm like, you should have asked me about this earlier. I don't be having time like that to do certain things like out the blue. So last minute thing. I was tired. Worked. And she like late at like eight or nine or nine, eight or nine or ten at night. And she's asking, do I want to read the Bible? I'm like, I'm thinking about my sermon. I got to write, uh, not a sermon, about the scriptures I got to write. Pray five times a day, too many. Nah, that's not biblical, that praying five times a day stuff. If you praying any way that uh, Muhammad taught you how to pray to Allah, them prayers, it's not righteous prayers. But you need to pray in Jesus' name, and and that's give you direct access to to God. But Allah is not the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way you can be saved in that name. Now my phone on six percent, y'all. That, yeah, that's demonic, all that crystals and all that stuff. IUIC is a cult. Hi, I'm Taylor Swift. You need to repent, Taylor Swift. Accept Jesus Christ in your life. And believe the gospel. Confess with your heart. Confess with your mouth, believe with your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. How do you know that they weren't? Easter is pagan. Somebody said, Happy Easter Eve. Drex, good looking out, brother, on the um, ten dollar contribution. He says, First John chapter five, verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So, First John chapter five and verse seven. But there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Father, Jesus Christ, who we talked about in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the everlasting Father. The Word, in the beginning was the Word. We read about in Genesis, we read about it in John. And the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ. All three are Jesus Christ, and all these three are one. And, the, and there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit in the water, in the blood, and these three agree in one. The Spirit, Holy Ghost again. The water, what was what when they pierced Jesus, when they stabbed them on the um, cross, what came out? Water and blood. And these three agree in one. I heard you say that Revelation one fifteen had nothing to do with color. Yeah, that had nothing to do with color.
You said being barefoot in grass is beneficial on a cellular level, but not for any supernatural reasons. We were not born with shoes or clothes. Yeah, but the people in the Bible, they not, they, they, only in Adam and Eve or, um, what we heard about that in Noah, what we heard, they had to put, they, they had to be covered because they was, if people seen them, they was ashamed. So they had to be covered. Ed Merceda, what's up? A Knight of the King. Let me see. Why y'all keep telling me the name of car for edit? Rolls Royce. Jesus was not a normal angel. He was superior to the other angels, the firstborn of creation. She says, "All oh, another reason barefoot is good, although I'm not a fan because I don't like things on my feet and they are sensitive, but shoes actually don't allow the proper muscles to strengthen. Okay. Yes. Amen, John. Yo, that's a true statement, my brother. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is God in the flesh. Yes. It says shoes are built to narrow in the toe area in the arch support. It's counterproductive to maintaining the muscles. And, and thou, Lord, in the beginning, haste laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. So that's telling us what it talks about in John, how the world was created by him. And then it goes back in Hebrews 1 and 10 and tells you again, and the same thing that it tells us in Genesis. So once you read this, you start to learn more about why Jesus was there from the beginning. In the spirit of God, not in the flesh, in the spirit of God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, haste laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Angel 7-7, seven, seven. what's up? Peace be unto you. Philippian also says that Christ is the spirit of of God incarnated in the flesh, he came in the likeness of a man, humbling himself as a servant. Yeah. Brock Krim says, Justin, I don't think this channel is helping you get closer to God. It's leading you astray. Who is, why would you say that? It 
somebody saying, you saying don't listen to people with no scriptures. And you're just quoting people and that and people. You talking, leaning on your own understanding. God said, lean not on your own understanding. There's a way that seems right to man. And y'all go read what the way, the ending there of what God said it'll be. Yeah, rightly divide the word. Study to show yourself approved. Hey, Glob, you said limited understanding of the universe. I don't want to understand nothing about the universe. That because that's not in God's word. That's like trying to say study about um Leos and and and, and um Tauruses and, and uh, we ain't supposed to study that. The, the Bible don't talk about the universe. It talk about the earth and the heavens and the earth. So it say the it say man's wisdom is foolishness unto God. The wisdom of this world, foolishness unto God. So, I don't know what you're saying. Living and understanding of the universe. Are you one of them dudes that be watching them channels that them dudes be sitting in the woods talking about the universe is working in your favor? All of the people that did this to you, they don't really post no Bible scripture. They just act like they prophesy and stuff. And a lot of them be doing that. They'll tell you what the people that are after you are doing and stuff like that. Man, that stuff is weird, brothers and sisters. I don't do that. John Yo said, Jesus himself told his disciples, how long have I been with you? And you still don't know me? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So yes, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is God in the flesh. Hallelujah. Thank you, John. I love you, brother. So it's simple. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. We just read all that stuff from Hebrews to Genesis to John to show y'all the word was with God. The word was created by him. And now a whole nother scripture is telling you. Jesus himself told his disciples how long even in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. Can't forget that. How long have I been with you and you still don't know me if you have seen me? You have seen the Father. So yes, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is God in the flesh. Mariah, peace be unto you. The belief that the earth will be restored by God and all those who don't belong to the 144,000 can live forever on earth in a restored paradise. But the natural man, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14.
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, y'all. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See? A natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolish unto him. Remember, they think good is evil and evil is good. The Bible said, woe well, unto y'all that call evil good and good evil. It said, for the pure, all things are pure. But for the defiled and unlearned, um, the unstable and all of them, everything is defiled. You get what I'm saying? Casey, cute effects. Peace be unto you, sis. A day with God is like a thousand years. One day with the Lord is as like a thousand years. So, Manasseh Demetrio, I really don't know how old I am. But if you want to go with just like regular age, worldly age, I'm 37, bro. That's 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 so true, Casey Cundiff. Your identity is who you are in Christ. It doesn't matter where he was from. He was the sacrifice and was obedient to him calling. Hebrews ain't spreading gospel. They are just angry at the white man about slavery. There is no love in their step. Yeah, that's right, Stan Naguima. In the Hebrew Israelites, they never mad at the other Hebrew Israelites that put them into slavery first. You notice when you read the scriptures in the Old Testament, it say the Hebrew Israelites put their own people into slavery after they got out of bondage out of Egypt. Jeremiah, or it was Jeremiah or Nehemiah, the prophet, he rebuked all the wealthy, rich Israelite slave owners to tell them let all this, the um slaves go they let all the slaves go and then brought them back so that shows you that these people ain't spreading the true gospel but an angel cannot atone for the sins of every human being on earth All right, so Trevor Daly trying to say that nationality is a part of the gospel. Show me the word national. You won't even find the word nationality anywhere in the New Testament. How about that? So if we see, they'd say nations, but not nationality. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. See? So, you're saying that they spoke on nationality in Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, right there. I don't get it. You're saying that there's no such thing as nationality. It's just Christ, right? Our identity. Just Christ, right? I think that's what you pray proven. We are not supposed to judge others' beliefs. Uh, Pop one, you can't prove that with the scriptures, what you're saying. Said, I'm a devil. How about this?
Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, you said, I'm a devil. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So, you've been warned, Pop One. I love you. Jesus loves you. Oh, we got a lot of people to remove out the chat. Some of them, we just got to put them on timeout because they might keep coming back. It seemed like they didn't just come in here to do nothing and just say this was like crazy words. There's truth in all of it. Your fruit is what is written on your heart. Yeah. The Bible tells you you need a teacher, man, that keep the commandments. To have understanding, there are no commandment keepers here. Hebrews 5 and 2. I'm going to read this real quick. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. That just show you that you need Jesus Christ in your life, brother. Email me so we could talk. I want to talk about that, how you feel. So I'm believing and you have so much little faith in my Messiah and my master. So I would love to talk if you email me. We're not talking about LeBron's legacy, brother. I. There are people that still go to Egypt and worship the pharaohs. Yeah, that's the thing. 
a lot of these teachers that try to teach you about them pictures and stuff like that, they go to Russia and, 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 and these are black Israelites. These are the people who want to teach you to go worship these um, mummies. They, they go to see them dead mummies. We can't even come at dead people and stuff like that. They go on to see dead mummies and they, they think being resurrected is going to see dead people. We know that our resurrection is spiritual being dead and not being with Christ and then being with Christ. We are alive. See, but their, their whole thing of resurrection is like, they want to go study the dead people and stuff like that. They actually go to them, um, them pyramids that keep, that's like a big tombstone. Christ is a true and living God, so you're supposed to worship him. We go to Jerusalem, we can see all that stuff where he walked and stuff like that. But we're not supposed to be going to no Egypt, looking at no pyramids and stuff like that. That ain't biblical. They worship Pharaoh out there. Them Egyptians and people, they they that's their God. This is the people that tell you their heart is lighter than a feather. They believe in my yacht and stuff like that. Yeah, he's like, that's all them Egyptian gods and stuff like that. They even make these gods leaders of these secret sororities and stuff like that. It's weird, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, they get deep. Like they got certain gods that they call the medicine god and stuff like that. It's real weird. What letter of the alphabet would be you? I don't know. It's, let me try to just get to the biblical questions. Matthew Lindy said, please give me a shout out. May peace be upon you, Matthew, Matthew Lindy. I hope this video brings you closer to Jesus Christ. I hope this video makes you want to read the word of God. Have a strong relationship with Christ. Because he is God. I'm going to put this dude on timeout. Because you posting stuff with no scriptures. Bakrim. You just want to type stuff in the chat. And say, look at me, y'all. You got to post scriptures, man. I should have showed his comment. Before I put him on pause. For 30 minutes. He, he going to say all don't mean all in the Bible. He trying to take teachings and stuff that I did yesterday when I did the thing on defiling. And say y'all don't know it. No, now he trying to be like me. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm inspired you to want to read the word of God and. And, and you know it's it, it gives brings you joy, but come on, brother, you got post scriptures when you be doing stuff, say stuff like that, and you just kept going and going and going. So please, y'all, be respectful, respect the comments, because I won't, I don't, I feel bad blocking y'all. I want y'all to be able to learn and and get any question you wanna know about God answered there's people in here that have knowledge and wisdom of the word
Oh, Babu Go said, I am not a Christian, and I respect Christian people. Amen. All glory be to God. Alex Madison. Jesus is at the door, and the bride is on the edge of the seat. We going home soon, so soon. I can smell the dinner table being eat, being set. Y'all hit the like button. If y'all like this stream. Sainada. The Most High has one set of chosen people. I'm sorry, the truth hurts. When it says, and Peter, but ye are chosen generation. But ye are chosen generation. You know what that means? I mean, not first Peter. Because hold on. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That chosen generation don't mean just one nation of people. It means every nation living on the earth. That's what chosen generation means. I forgot what, what, ch what chapter and verse that is. Yeah. Cloud T said, would God love me if I were, I don't know what that is, a LGBT flag? Yeah, God might love you, but he might not love the sin. I rebuke all monitoring spirits in Jesus Christ's name. Bar Kim, I don't need understanding. I trust the Lord and his true living word. What's my dating range age wise? I'm not looking to date really like that. I'm looking to further my relationship with Christ.
I look to get married one day, but I'm looking to just further my relationship with Christ right now. And have children, but the way is knowing who you are, finding purpose, walking with actions of love, and taking the necessary disciplines to better yourself. Yeah. I love the YouTube name. Your daily dose of American football. All glory be to God. I started it out with just, um, I didn't have in, in Jesus' name. And I added that on. And it seemed like as soon as I added that on, the spirit of God descended like a dove upon this channel. God is good. Wisdom. See, people like you believe in the 48 laws of power. And y'all say don't outshine the master. But God, Jesus Christ, is who was God, he said, don't call no man master. You said there's no God, just good and bad. No God, just good and bad. So nobody created the earth. Nobody created the heavens. Nobody created the animals or nothing, right? Just good and bad things happen and all this stuff was created, right? There's no creator. That don't sound right, brother. People be saying if the earth is flat or is it round, but you just saying good and bad things happen and this is why everything is the way. No, you got to explain this stuff because in the Bible, it tells us whether it's flat or round. And thy glory rightly divide the word of truth. James 1 says to the 12 tribes of Israel, James 5 is talking about the tribulation period. So that isn't for the church age Christians. Yeah, Roxy, God is my best homie. Sold my soul to Jesus Christ. But Casey Cuddiff, you know the people that say as above, so below? You know where they get that from? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in as as an earth as it is in heaven that's where they get that from as above so below but i don't know who's teaching that is but i get, i think that's like um it's the kabbalah or something like that i forgot what it was I've read it before. I've read all that stuff. Man. I think it's the Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. But they stole all that stuff from the word of God. That's what I'm telling you. I'm from you, 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 Uzbekistan. You, Uzbekistan. Excuse me. Uzbekistan in the chat. Peace, 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 peace be upon you. Uzbekistan. May peace be upon you. You said copying um, demigods from the Greek mythology. Yeah, they make their own gods, put them on statues and say they alive. 
But what happened if that guy fall off the table and break? Is he still alive? Good, good, Jeanette. Jeanette Fletcher, peace be unto you. I love you too. I love all y'all. She said we love you. She said I love you. So I love all y'all too. No, you're not. Satan is a tool. You got some people in the comment section. The moderators are, are block certain chats. They hold them for review. And these comments are so wicked in the background that. They're not even letting me see this dude's name. So I could block them. Yeah, I'm not giving any temptations. Sometimes you have to show that we're hated of the world so we can show that we are not enemies of God. These people are worldly people. They don't post no Bible scriptures, but they got so much evil, wicked stuff to say. They're not of God. That's why. They are of their father. So, you are not God's child. What do, what do you mean by that? If you are God's child, then you are God's. Tell them, Candy, you can be rebellious now in this world, but I warn people, there's a day coming where every knee will bow and tongue confess he is king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus is coming soon. Now, we as church age Christians cannot commit the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in this time period. It can only be committed during crisis advent. All right. The first time Christ came, the Pharisees committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And in his second coming, many in the world will do the same again. Yep, and that's what we talked about in the beginning of this live stream, how they blasphemy the Holy Spirit. Everything that they did to him, they broke the Levitical priesthood law. They wasn't supposed to rent, rip their clothes and stuff like that. So they broke the law of the priest. So we learned a lot on this stream today. Y'all got the comments rolling. Y'all yeah, got the comments rolling. Let me see. I speak truth because I have witness. Oh, Omen, speak truth because I have witness. The abundance we all stumble that does not define who we are. So, so true.
Deep State USA said we hit another brick wall. You still ain't tell us yet uh, who you represent. Who is we? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jesus, for another day to study his word with fellow believers. Amen. Somebody said this world, the world is not evil. People act evil. Pride and ego. So that makes the world evil. People in the world are evil. The world and the things of this world are temporary and evil. Your soul is more valuable than what this world can offer. Give your soul to Christ. He will give you eternal life. But I want to go back to this comment. She said the world is not evil. People act evil. God said he who is friends with this world is enemies of God. So he said, you think that I came to save the world? He said the world might be saved through him. And then he said, I pray. He said, I pray not for this world. I pray for those that are mine and who the father sent me. Said the world hate me because I testify of it because their because their works are evil. He said the world can't hate you because it hate me first because I testify of it and because their works are evil. It said when the Holy Ghost come, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to reprove the world of sin and of righteousness. Jesus said when the um Herod, he they said, man, you got to depart from here because Herod will find out and come get you and kill you. He said, tell that fox I cast out devils today, tomorrow, and the third day, and do cures on the third day. He, he said, tell that fox that I cast out devils today, tomorrow, and on the third day. Omar Salinas says, pray for me. I have a bad earache. Omar Salinas. Father, if it be in your will, can you take this pain from this brother's ear and give him ways to release from the pain? Make him strong enough to find ways to get through this. And give them knowledge and wisdom and just peace. In Jesus' name. You say you have a bad earache. Jeanette Fletcher, I have to go, but I love you in Jesus Christ. Peace be upon you. For those who believe there's a blessing in everything, amen.
try to get to some more of these comments that's on the bottom. Monkey, what's up? What if you don't know how to read? How would you do these things with them? If you don't know how to read, then you got to listen to the audio Bible. Amen, Darren. Back rim. You have your relationship with God and I have mine. I have my way of analyzing and you have yours. I live how I see fit as do you. That's it. That's all. Yeah, a lot of people are going to have their own interpretation. But we know what God say in his way is the only right way. So. We got to work hard as we could to make our way God's way. And then we'll be Christ-like, more Christ-like than we think we are. More holy, more righteous, more godly. Some people do learn the hard way. Jesus wins. He possesses Israel is what he said. Deion Sanders, may peace be upon you, brother. What's going on? Read James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8, Casey. Topper says, confess with your heart to God in secret and be saved. Baby Bear says, hi, what's going on? Peace be upon you. Can you say hi, Peepa, Pippa? Pippa, what's up, Pippa squad? Thank you for joining. I hope this live stream bring you closer to Jesus Christ, make you want to study his word and have a relationship and see how powerful he is and see that he is God. Mr. Q83. What's up? What's up? Peace be unto you. Is Jesus my God, brother? No, Jesus is your father. He's your master. You, 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 you are a slave to righteousness. Once you confess with your heart and believe, once you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord, you no longer are supposed to live as a slave to sin, but a slave to righteousness. So you love the you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, yeah, and everywhere the gospel is preached. This story must be told about a, of a memorial for the woman who wiped Jesus' feet with her hair with the alabaster oil. Jora Johnson, what's up? Motor City Free Press, Shalawan, brother. Signs and synchronicity. Dylan Eugene Richards. Peace. What's up? 
Peace be unto you in Jesus' name. There's no such thing as the rapture, Casey. Before you say these things, you should look and see if they're in the Bible. And I know you got Google. So you can look it up on Google and see. Is the word rapture in the Bible? So how can you say the rapture is the awakening, the shift of consciousness? And that word is not in the Bible. Christ consciousness return. Bar Kim, I know you want to be the Lord's hall monitor, LOL, but I appreciate the discourse. Nice locks. The light is the law. It's written in Psalms. Yeah, that's true, Engine. Dutchawa. The law is the light. They said the law is our schoolmaster, but now crisis came. We no longer need a schoolmaster. So when you in school, you a child. Christ said when I was a, in the word of God in the New Testament, it said when I was a child. Uh, oh, this might be Old Testament. It would say when I was a child, I thought, of, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish deeds. Friends of this world is enemies of God. If the world doesn't hate you, then you may be not with Christ. That's right, Engine Duchawa. And that's why I want to show y'all all these comments that I got that they held for um, review of all these people. They ain't disagreeing me with scriptures. They just coming out telling me how they feel. Remember how Jesus said the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy, and we're not ignorant of his devices. I'm not even going to say the stuff that they're saying. I'm just going to skim through it real quick and y'all can see it. It's thousands of messages. I ain't even know that I had that much comments because it's a lot being held. I just see the ones that they post up. And that's a lot to get back to. But some of y'all thought that y'all was going to just say stuff in the, in the comment section. And it was going to be like that because I'm getting so many comments. I'm making videos. No, I got time to get back. Trust me. And I'm firing back at them in the comments like never before. I'm showing them. They try to say ain't no J in the Hebrew alphabet. And it was a never a J in no alphabet. I showed them in the Japanese alphabet there was a J. I showed them in all the different countries and languages that they had J's in these alphabets. So, yeah, you trying to make this claim, but it ain't really all accurate like y'all trying to say. They think, they think they do all this studying and they know all this information, but the stuff they doing, I'm showing them. It's 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 not the you don't got you don't know everything. Only God. He said the word J ain't come into existence until like the 16th century. I showed him. Nope, that ain't true. Jeremiah 44, 19. I'm on their heels. They can't do nothing. Everything they try to make it seem like what they teaching it's a complete truth. It ain't even the way that Christ teach. So it can be tore down because it's, it's not built on the rock. It's built on the sand. Remember what? It, remember that parable, y'all? And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, 
Did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her with our men? Now, this is talking about the idolatry of Judah. If they was making incense to the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offerings unto her, they was they was committing idolatry. Yeah, they was committing idolatry. And that's what we read about. That's what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Healthy year, YouTube. All glory be to God. He said, filled with the Holy Spirit. It's in your face, literally. Hood. <laughs> All glory be to God, brother. Praise the Lord. Every day, all day, it's a book. It's 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 um somewhere in Psalms. I don't know if it's Psalms one hundred three. But I say his name shall continually be in my mouth. I don't think it's Psalms one hundred three. Now, Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Morpheus. Do we think we are in the biblical end times according to the word of God? Yes, we are. And are we actually heading for the preliminary preliminary rapture in the beast system? I wouldn't call it the rapture because that word is not biblical, but the system has already been started and we've been living in it. <laughs> yes, Casey. Through the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a new identity, which is as children of God. But that's if we have faith in his atonement for our salvation. Only a master of self. There's no such thing as a master of self. You have to have a master. And that's Christ. They call no man master. So you shouldn't call yourself master if he said call no man master. So when you talk about the coming of the son of man, the signs of the end, and God knows the day and the hour, that's what y'all are talking about, the rapture. It says, it says in uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse six, no, verse five. For many shall come in my name. No, let's start at verse four. And Jesus answered and said unto them, 
Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is in which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. So, and then it says, in Matthew 24, 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So how would y'all tell us to look forward to April 8th about this solar eclipse? That ain't got nothing to do with the biblical Bible. That's some man telling you. Everybody taking off school and all this. They talking about NASA going to shoot rockets and stuff. God loves those who follow what they say they do. Giving the eyeball. Amen. God wrote the Bible, Flame Cash. See, you got James 14 and 21. Hold on. This falls on 7%, y'all. I'm about to end this live in a second. Let's say James fourteen and twenty one. There's no such thing as James 14 and 21. Yeah, we rather obey God rather than man. Good morning, beautiful people. Alisa. Be it, be it Betty or Bietti. Good morning. Peace be unto you. Saka on top. Nope, not in the Bronx. People of the state of California, LLC, what do you think about pagans mixing with God, the pagan god Ishtar, 
First Samuel chapter seven, verse three. Hold on. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods that Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So, Balaam and Ashtaroth, were were strange gods. I think anything dealing with strange gods is dealing with witchcraft, enchantment, soothsaying. You dealing with um, mat um, soothsayer, sorcery, fortune telling, magic. People that do things that push you far away from God and curse God and mock God and. Blasphemy, God. That's what I think you're dealing with. Well, that's what I know you're dealing with. But I don't know. They said his name, but I don't think it was Ishtar. That might be what they call it today. I don't know. Lakeisha Felton, God is... Amazing. Words can't even explain how good he is. I love football. Amen. I love you, God. Make sure you always put God with a capital G, brother. When you put it with a lowercase g, that could mean false gods. So God doesn't have a son? Yeah, Jesus Christ is God's son, but Jesus Christ is the father too. Jesus Christ is God the father. The spirit of God had a son and that spirit was a living flesh called Jesus Christ. That was his name. His name was called many names. Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And you saying he's not God? They said if any, this man can't be a devil if he's healing the blind. They said since the beginning of time, didn't they say that if anyone healed a sight of the blind, he has to be of God? If the Bible is from man alone, then why does the Bible go against all of mankind's evil desires? Lust, greed, pride, wrath, ETC. Exactly. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 through 5. This is this man for real. Let me see what he's talking about. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away 
from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So these Egyptian gods were getting people put to death for worshiping them. You still want to go follow the Anunnaki's and all that stuff? You better throw that Anunnaki chain in the trash. Without Jesus willing to walk in purpose, we would not have the opportunity to be filled with the spirit. Yeah. See, Cat Williams had to use Jesus name so he could try to corrupt the teachings and make y'all believe that what he doing is biblical. That chain that he got that he talking about the Anunnaki's. That ain't no biblical stuff. Knight of the King, thanks for explaining what everyone already knows and is widely available. Do you have a job? Nah, I don't really have a job, brother. I do door dash sometimes and get a few bucks, but no, I don't have a job. Bro, people arguing all in the comments about how good the Lord is. Yeah. <laughs> They're not arguing really though. They edifying one another. Yeah, Casey says you're you're not chosen because of your heritage or your religious claim. You are chosen by true faith, belief, and good works. You said your sister always try to get you to read the New Testament. QZ at QH you should read it brother it's worth it wake up we writing our we ain't writing our own bibles every day flame cash that's a lie straight from the pits of hell there's only one bible one book of prophecy one word of God we are fulfilling prophecies Every day, seeing prophecies being fulfilled every day, but we are not writing our own Bible. <laughs> Make sure y'all check out that Jesus Christ is God t shirts if y'all get a chance on my channel on the About Me section. Flame 199.
Thank you for the contribution, brother. Can y'all tell me what was people reading BC before Christ? They was reading Old Testament. That was Moses' time. But are you talking about before Moses and all that? They probably was reading nothing. There wasn't no language before languages and all that stuff. It wasn't, the world wasn't in existence. It was complete darkness, remember? We learned about this in Genesis. So it wasn't no creatures, wasn't nothing before God came in Genesis. So before Christ was even born, before Moses was even born, when we read Genesis, the first human was made. When Adam and Eve was made, we learned about all this. A lot of people start saying that they was doing like certain tests and they all traced their um, lineage back to Adam. This is why people will say, like, we all come from the same person. Like, we all humans. You know, you got the people that say, yo, some people are really not humans and stuff like that. But I never seen nobody with four legs or three arms or unless they were, like, born with, you get what I'm saying? With a uh, deficiency. My device is overheating, y'all. Oh, boy. It's going to cut off. I'm going to have to come back or I can just cut it off right now. I think I'm going to just cut it off right now. Cheyenne Mendoza, how are you? Hey, peace be unto you. God is king. God is the king above kings. Yep. Hallelujah. How many times, Jesus, gracious guidance, ministry, peace be unto you. If y'all got any questions, y'all can email me. My email is in the about me section. Carter's Closet, name a car for an edit. A Buick. Um, I'm back, y'all. God is great. Just gained a subscriber. Needed place. Jera, thank you. I don't know if you can see my messages. Why do you grow out your hair? Because this is what God said in Numbers chapter 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either a man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried, all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother for his brother or for his sister when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hate defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. I 
All right, y'all. I think I'm going to end this live. Jose, good to see you. Explore. Go back and watch the beginning of this video. You'll learn a lot about how Jesus Christ told you that him and his father is one. We just explained everything throughout this video. So I'm going to end this. I don't want to keep y'all too long. I'll be back soon. Lord willing. No problem, Justine. Thank y'all for joining. Yeshua is king. Romario, Marcel. No, no other king greater. There will never be a king greater. King of all kings, Lord of all lords. I'll see y'all soon. Peace be unto you. In Jesus' name.